Okay. Where am I going to throw to, Fred, just down to the pits or what? Is there a specific person? Let's look at the lineup. Okay. All right, here we go. Yeah. Yeah of what the track here at Richmond is all about. It is three quarters of a mile. It is D-shaped since the track was rebuilt several seasons ago. On the back stretch, two degrees of banking to give the cars a little help to going into turn three. The front stretch, actually the curved front stretch, banked eight full degrees. The corners, of course, more steeply banked, 14 degrees of banking in both the first and third corners here. Beautiful night for racing, as we mentioned. 74 degrees as we get ready to put this one under green tonight. Only 29% humidity, barely a wind north out of five miles an hour and the skies are perfectly clear tonight temperature may be a factor a little later because it could cool off into the 50s and that might provide these teams with a little different situation the first real race of the fall season when the temperatures will be quite a bit cooler to describe all the action mark martin's bid for five in a row let's send it back upstairs to ken squire and neil bonham neil so many stories developing unfolding as the field is rolling out right now 36 strong up in front, Bobby Labonte, the first rookie on the pole since Davey Allison of several years back. And you've got Ernie Irvin alongside. You mentioned Davey Allison, the car that won the race. Irvin is in that car. After the driver change there, he's in the 28 car. Car won the last race here. Good shot to win again tonight. And, of course, the Ernie Irvin story. He is going to be really hard to stay with. He loves this racetrack and runs it very, very well. And Bobby Labonte, he is definitely looking for a win out here tonight. Let's go down to the Martin Pitts right now with Dick Bergren. Well, Jack Roush ought to have some good ideas as to what the odds are of this thing winning. You own the car, you built the motor. How about it? What are your chances? Oh, I think we're about one in three tonight. That's not really different than what it would have been for any one of the previous four races that we've won. Rusty will be really good. It's a matter of determining uh, here after a couple of laps of the three cars running enough gear to, to really be a factor. You know, they've been uh, maybe holding back some. Okay, to Randy Pemberton. Randy? Well, I'm standing here with Richard Childress, car owner for Dale Earnhardt. Richard, I understand a, a slight problem in the last practice session. Did you cure it, and what was it? Well, it, it, we were getting ready to go to the gas pumps to put the car on the line, and Andy heard the clutch squealing, and, uh, you know, and come to find out the clutch was going out of it. So, we, you know, we get, dodged a bullet there, and we changed it and had about 10, 15 minutes left. So maybe that'll be a good sign for the night. Starting lineup has Bobby Labonte and Ernie Irvin running in row one for tonight's race. As we look at the Haviland starting lineup, going to row two, it's Rusty Wallace and Darrell Waldron. Row three is Harry Gant and Rick Mass. Row four tonight, Jeff Bodine and Dale Earnhardt. In row five, it's Dick Trickle and Mark Martin. For row six, Kyle Petty and Ken Schrader. Row seven, Dale Jarrett and Derek Cope. Row eight is Michael Waltrip and Brett Bodine. Row nine is Ricky Rudd and Jeff Purvis. In row 10, Jimmy Hensley and Rick Wilson. Row 11, Jimmy Spencer and Jeff Gordon. Row 12, Terry Labonte and Sterling Marlin. Row 13, Hutch Strickland and Bill Elliott making his 400th start. In row 14, Phil Parsons and Kenny Wallace. Row 15, Morgan Shepard and Wally Dollenbach. In the 16th row, Jimmy Means and Todd Bodine. 17th row, Dave Marcus and Bobby Hillen. Outback Provisional, Ted Musgrave and Greg Sachs. Stand by. We're ready to get it on here tonight. As the field is coming down, they're going to take one before they turn them loose. Here's Johnny Hayes. I, I think Rusty Wallace is the man to beat. Great pit crew, great pit stop, practicing well. His record here is unbelievable. Rusty's the guy to beat tonight. And he's the guy that won this race just a year ago. Crowd settles in on, on board Mark Martin's car. We have four onboard cameras for you tonight. Derek Cope's car is further back in the field. 18 cameras giving you the pictures. Bobby Hill will give us some pictures further back. Heilig Meyer's car. Neil settling down. Light is off of the pace car. They wanted to get this race cranking at close to 7.30 as possible tonight. That's just what they're doing. T.W. Taylor, Jimmy Horton, Rich Bickle and Richie Petty failed to qualify. Richie tore his car up pretty hard this afternoon when he bounced off the second turn wall. Down they come, ready to take green. Shots of Jimmy Hensley's car as Bobby Labonte brings them across the strike. And we're going to go racing with Bobby Labonte on the pole. First pole for a rookie since Davey did it back in 87. And 
and on the break, everybody away clean. Well, Kenneth, again, the first turn, Ken Schrader got shoved way outside against the wall, but he got it back down without any problem. Coming around to the outside. Hard to say this name in car number 28, isn't it? But there's Ernie Irvin up in front. Kenny made a strong move on the outside. That's something you're going to see at this racetrack. A lot of tracks we go to at single file, not Richmond. We've seen a lot of side-by-side -side racing. Larry Irvin takes the lead from the outside. Second time out in those famous black, gold, red colors. Back down to the line. It's Ernie Irvin for lap two. Rusty Wallace is deployed third, as you see there. Walter is back and forth. Three-quarter mile track. Fast down into that number one corner. Hard out of number two, almost a single lane. Hard breaking into turn number three. Sweeping around turn number four. Big change there. They changed that wall dramatically. The Sawyers have uh, cut 75 feet off the wall and turned it in. So it's not nearly the danger point that it has been in the past. They've done a good job with that wall. There you see the battle up in front. Look at Earnhardt trying to get underneath Darrell Waldrop as they skirmish for four. They said they dodged a bullet. They had a clutch problem as they got ready to put it on the line, and they were the last car out just a few minutes before the race started, so they dodged a big bullet, as Childress said. Walter, if he qualifies this good, you can bet he's going to be a factor in the race. Right up front when this one started. Take a look at Ernie Irvin. And uh, right here, here comes Dale Earnhardt back, back with those leaders another time. Bobby Labonte having an excellent run in car number 22. Great qualifying effort. Take a look at Ken Schrader having his hands full out there. Gant on the outside. Kyle Petty right there with him. Scoot down to back straight away. Looking back at the ninth position battle. Here's Kyle Petty taking that inside line away from Gant. But we've seen people be able to run off that side. See Gant pull him off the rear Cope's car. And you can see Gant just squirt away from Kyle up off that corner. Top Arctic camera giving you these shots of the Bojangles car. Dale Yarborough's team staying right there as they follow the Kyle Petty machine. Down off that corner, Kyle's in 11th. We're in the 12th place car. Let's get back up there again with Dale Earnhardt working on Waltrip. Seven laps complete. Back up to the lead. There goes Bobby Labonte on the outside trying to make his move. Ken, from the time this thing started, Labonte's moved up. We were talking about this thing, two lanes to work with. Pretty gutsy move, the outside this early. See him get the car out there. Now you got to worry about coming off. It's not so bad on this straightaway, but if you're outside off two, you run out of racing room. We'll have to see if they can make it. Last week, he got himself a 14th at Darlington. He was 15th at Bristol. Here he comes on the outside. Pitches it right out there. Out of that very dangerous second turn. What a race for the lead. A treacherous place off turn two. He did not hesitate. He just stuck it out there, stood in the throttle. Looked like he's going to make it work. For the lead. Johnny Hayes has watched Wallace. Watch him indeed. As he stuck the nose of car number two, the Penske right in the midst of things. You know, if Johnny Hayes is right, we'll never do the end of it. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, look at the 22 car. They've been coming along week after week. Labonte's doing a great job of that. And it's the first time that Labonte, Bobby Labonte, has led since Pocono back in July on that great two-and-a-half-mile track. Here comes Rusty Wallace trying to take it away from him. Defending champion here in this 400-lap race. Meanwhile, take a look a little further back. This is for fifth spot. Mark Martin on the inside of Earnhardt. Got it. Here they're going down. you got a big sweeping turn down in turn one. You can run side by side. They're coming off this corner. As they make this exit of the corner, it really gets tight. On board with Mark Martin. The Pyro car. Pyro camera swings back down on the inside. Here he comes looking for Walter. You can see ahead there that Rusty Wallace took the lead. He didn't make that pass on the outside. There's Labonte in third, dropping to fourth right there in front of Mark Martin. And Mark Martin draws him down again. The 22 cars fading back a bit here. And the six cars doing what it's been doing, fading to the front in a hurry. From 10th into fourth in 13 laps. Mark Martin, car six. And to the inside on Waltrip. 
let's go back to the leaders another time. Take a look at this. Wallace. Rusty Wallace now has the advantage. Ernie Urban is in second. Waltrip is in third. Martin for fourth. Bobby Labonte in fifth. Earnhardt is sixth. And then it's Bodine in seventh. A little further back in eighth, it's Schrader. Ninth is Kyle Petty. Tenth is Rick Mass. And eleventh is Harry Gant. More from Richmond in a moment. Hey, Fred, if we get a chance, take a look at the rear wheels of the six car and see if the brake rotors are cherry red. Rear wheels, as he goes in the corner, look like they were just cherry red. Just as tight as you can on it. There might not be anything there. I thought it was. When he went down turn one, I saw the rears light up. It's okay. I think it's red paint I see on there. right now Rick nineteen as they come by Rick okay thanks Incredible sunset scene from Airship Shamu tonight provided by SeaWorld here at Richmond, Virginia. Welcome back to live coverage of the Miller Genuine Draft 400 on TBS. Great to have you with us here tonight as we watch quite a battle behind leader Rusty Wallace. The race for second. Darrell Waltrip on the outside of Ernie Irvin there. Waltrip up high coming out of turn two. It looks as though he will indeed grab second spot in this early stage of the race. We're just moving past the 20 lap mark tonight at Richmond. One of the stories we're going to follow for you, the True Value Hard Charger Award tonight. Every race, True Value posts $5,000 for the top five finishers in the True Value point standings. There's a $50,000 end of the season payoff. Dale Earnhardt is the end of the season leader right now by a good margin over Mark Martin and Rusty Wallace. We'll keep track of that battle for you tonight. There'll be 5,000 on the line for the top five finishers here at Richmond. Coming around a complete 24 laps as you look at this battle for second place. A four-time winner of this event here at Richmond, Darrell Walter. Stays right in front of Ernie Irvin in the number 28. Here's Irvin trying to take it back as he ducks low in turn number one. You're watching it live on TBS from Richmond International Raceway, the Miller 400. You know, a lot of racetrack, we talked about that inside line or a shorter track like this, that inside is preferred line, but we're seeing guys pass on that outside. We see Mark Martin up behind wearing his car with him. Behind the 28, he might look at that outside lane. That's the way most of the passing's been done. Here he comes, scooting down into turn number one, critical part of the track. Urban takes it low at Ford, stays down, as does Mark Martin. Here he comes, kicking it back again in the back straightaway, up to about 165 miles an hour, eases it down into turn three, averaging about 120 miles per hour per lap. As you follow the snark, Waltrip in second, Irvin third, Martin in fourth. Meanwhile, up in front, 
Rusty Wallace, who won this race by about three seconds a year ago, is building up a pretty heavy lead at the present time. First to second, he's already got himself more than a second on that three-way battle that's just behind. Again, this has always been a good racetrack for Rusty Wallace, and as Johnny Hayes said, he put up a lot of good numbers in practice. One here in 89, won it last year. Rusty Wallace won four races out of eight at the beginning of this season. And, of course, he had some things go really bad for him, but he still stays very much in the point hunt. We'll tell you more about that as the night progresses. Look at this slugfest a little further back. This is the white district's position. There you see Bodine in the 15, right down there in the Bud Moore car. And right beside him comes Earnhardt. Bud Moore, the owner of that car 15, you know, made an interesting statement. He said there are three kinds of drivers out here right now in Winston Cup racing. Bud Moore said there's Dale Earnhardt, then there's two or three that can stay with him, and then there's the rest of them. Yeah, they put a lot, put a lot of confidence. Earnhardt drove for Bud Moore years ago. Really appreciates the type, type of driver Earnhardt is, and he gets the job done. But he's got to get it done. He's got some guys in front of him there. He's got to get busy. One of them is Kyle Petty. He's cutting his own mark this year, getting very strong in the Felix Savetis car. Back to the bottom of the speedway, number 42, Kyle Petty beginning to roll up through. 30 of 400 laps are now complete on this three-quarter mile track. Guys, Dale Earnhardt has come over the radio and said the car is a little tight in the middle of the corners, and he's spinning the wheels when he's coming off. Now, it's not a major thing. I think as this race goes on, the track will come around to Earnhardt. They'll probably make a few minor adjustments, mostly with air pressure in the tires. They're doing a lot with air pressure these days. No, not a lot of adjustments as far as jacking wedge and stuff. So we'll see a couple of minor adjustments for Dale. It's not a big problem early on, I don't think. Jeff Bodine staying just in front of Kyle Petty and having a good run. Let's take a look up front. As they come around a complete lap 32, there you see a rusty Wallace. And take a look at this interval. I think it's shortening up here. There you see Wallace out in front. The 89 Winston Cup champion. And we'll get a chance to look a little further back here and see how they're doing and trying to collect him. And indeed, Waltrip is running Wallace down a bit. It's now where it was 1.3, now down to 7 tenths of a second. And look at the line, Walter Cusin. He's running a totally different line than the guy in first place and the guy in third. He's a full lane outside higher on the racetrack, and that will help you keep the tires out of the car. The tires should work better longer if he can run that longer line around and not really spin them up off the corner. And that's so critical on this racetrack. Getting those two little black patches hitched up to this asphalt is the trickiest part of a lot of tracks, but it's absolutely critical here at Richmond. And look at Ernie Urban. Take a swipe on the inside, run out of room as Waltrip on that high line. Those RPMs peaked right up there. There we see the two car of Rusty Wallace leading the race. He's running the pattern he wants to run right around the inside. Feed drip off the corner. Rusty Wallace. Richmond is your track, isn't it? I've always done good at this track. I won this race last time. A bunch of, a couple wins, a lot of seconds and thirds and stuff like that. And uh, hey, the weather's perfect today too. It's great, great weather for a race. Rusty Wallace, who was second here today, the Allison back in the spring. Leaders averaging 114 miles an hour and getting into the lap traffic. Pulling up on Dave Marcus in the 71 car. Dave won his last race here. Last race of his active career back in 1982 when he won in this event. Back on the old half mile here, the old famed fairgrounds at Richmond. My, how times have changed. Sawyers have spent some $20 million in improvements up to 71,000 seats, and they say that by the year 1995, they'll seat 100,000. And we noticed tonight, Neil, as we came in, that uh, they're still having this one problem with the arterial system. You're getting cars in and out. You know, they say Virginia's for lovers. It's a little hard on folks trying to get in and out of the racetrack. But one thing the track has done has gone to buses. I have never seen so many buses at a track of this size. And I don't think any Winston Cup races we've seen here in Richmond. Tonight. Kim, we've got great racing facilities, and I think the promoters, just like the Sawyers here, are really catering to these fans, trying to get them in and out. They want to see good racing, but they also want to be able to get in and out good. And talk about some good racing. Waltrip has taken advantage of that outside 
and he's really closing in on Rusty right now. Yeah, he's ready to park right on his rear bumper as we get to lap number 40 next time by. We'll be back with more in a moment. No. See Rusty move up now when he sees Walter coming up there. Ooh, look at 21 car. getting Ooh. 21 car in the wall. Turn two. 21 in the wall. Turn two. Gotcha. I saw him. He just something blew yep. a tire and went in. No caution. I can't believe that. There must be parts everywhere. Yeah. Back with you with 45 laps complete. And we have a struggle up in front. There you see Rusty Wallace challenged by Darrell Waltrip. Waltrip, a four-time winner of this event. Wallace won it twice and is defending champion in the Miller 400 at Richmond International Raceway. Meanwhile, two laps ago, it was Morgan Shepard socked the wall in turn number two. Then up the front, sparks flew all the way down the back stretch. He cut across the track, got back in. Look at this battle for the lead continue. Here's Waltrip looking as stout and strong as we've seen him this year. You know, we saw Waltrip running that high line, and the minute Waltrip caught Rusty Wallace, he took that high line to try to take that part of the track away. The question is, can Waltrip use the other section and make the pass? The thing about these radios and these pits, they're calling. I'm sure Rusty's got to say, hey, Waltrip's getting it done in the top. Now Rusty's trying it again. Around Greg Sachs they go as work continues on car number 21 down on pit road the wood brothers car being administered to after it socked the wall here comes waltrip back again watching this action as they come around the complete lap 48 it seems like walter was a lot quicker when he could stay out there and rusty's got up there and kind of taking that section martin stays third urban fourth kyle petty is fifth Definitely. Rudd is seventh, and you see Labonte in eighth. Terry, that's Bobby Labonte. Terry Labonte is ninth. Jeff Gordon is in tenth. There you see some of that struggle. There's Terry Labonte in the 14. Boy, you know, coming to North Wilkesboro, it's coming up very soon. Uh, Billy Hagan will have two cars there. He's going to start John Andretti in that second car. John will take over and drive the starting in 94, but they're going to get him out for the remainder of the season. I guess Phoenix is still in question, but you'll see two Billy Hagen cars at North Wilkesboro. One still driven by Terry Labonte and the other by John Andretti. And Andretti plans to stick it out and try to make it go in Winston Cup racing. Look at this battle between the 22 fighting his own way and uh, the rookie, leading rookie, Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon on the inside, number 24, picks up a spot. Give him ninth and move Bobby Labonte back to 10th from the score sheet as you've completed 50, 51 laps now are in the book. Ken, while we're watching this, the 21 had to go behind the wall. It looked like he blew a tire going in turn one. 
hit the wall hard and locked up the right front brake. They've got to take it to the garage and try to correct that problem. I, I was surprised NASCAR didn't throw a caution on that because he really bounced off the wall. And you can see the car. There might be some parts out there. We'd be tearing up some tires, but that's not the case. Good call by them. Plenty of sparks. It looked like it could have been something there, but evidently they did not have a problem with it because had a lot of traffic through there ever since. Waltrip second. And there you see that battle. Looking further back on the field. There you see the 26 and 25. That's a battle for 12th spot. Brett Bodine in that 26 and Schrader on the outside. Schrader, the man who holds the track record at a little over 123 miles per hour. Set last year. Trying to close in on Earnhardt. Earnhardt not having much fun. He's fallen back to 11. Watch the scramble for 12th. We Brett Bodine down on the bottom, and he's about to scoot through and try to set Earnhardt down another step. Earnhardt coming into the nice race, leading the point battle by some 304. But as was reported to you at the outset, they had trouble in that last period of practice, the last training period, and they changed the transmission. Always kind of a particular situation, making those kind of changes just before you come down for flag. Yeah, they had to put a new clutch in it also. Uh, I think what might have hurt him more than the neck in is that problem prevented the practice in that last session. Session and might have cost him some valuable track time. But uh, those guys got plenty of time during the race to sort it out. They can stay in the lead lap. We see the 20, uh, 25 car and the 18 going at it right behind them. Dale Jarrett in that 18, the Joe Gibbs car, on the move. He's up in the 14th. That battle's about 13 seconds behind the leaders. And here's that battle up in front. Bobby Hill and moving over. Well, this could getting some room. Again, this could be the chance which way he goes. There's the 17 going to get that inside lane. Could give him the lead right here. And Mark Martin could come with him. Wide enough down this lane straightaway. Nicely banked as they go into number one. And you're on board with Bobby Hillen in the Heilig Myers car. And we've got trouble down in turn number one and two. 28 blew it up. It looked like Ernie Irvin may have unhinged an engine, and he brings out the first caution of the race at lap 57. The car that started outside of the front row, Ernie Irvin, who was running in fourth position at the time. Smolders won, and they're going to roll him onto pit road. Fourth place car. On that lap, Ernie Irvin going into turn one as he stepped off the throttle, the engine went away. Yeah, he's just going directly to the garage. There's no pits for him. That thing's history. Yellow is out, and Johnny Hayes will try to get a word with him or get him over to Rick Benjamin. That's the end of the day for that Robert Yates team. Qualified up in front, but they take it right back to the caravan to load it up and take her home. Pit road, leaders coming in. Walshit, Martin. Wallace, Petty, Jeff Bodine, Ricky Rudd, Terry Labonte, Gordon, Bobby Labonte, Brett, the whole tribe's all on pit road now. That's where the action is. Everybody but on the lead lap came in, the one lap down stayed out. Here's where Rusty Wallace, not only is his car fast on the racetrack, this is where they've been beating everybody to death in the pits. And on that jack. Some of them got it down to one push and it's up, some to two. Here's Mark Martin coming out. 17-7 on Rusty Wallace. Very good stop on Wallace. Four tires. Boy, it looked like Walter beat him out. Yep. By pitting at the end, he was able just to roll out and beat him across that line. Track position means so much here at Richmond Hill. Yeah, you got to work so hard. We saw Walter run him down. Oh, Whoa. wheel came off. Somebody hit it, knocked it down pit road. Going all the way around the first turn. The question is, did it come off the winners or one that's already been changed? <laughs> Follow me. Meanwhile, Bobby Hilton and Dave Marcus in those lap cars now getting worked on. And Johnny Hayes is standing by with Ernie Irvin. Yes, I have Ernie Irvin, Ken. Ernie, what happened, bud? Um, I think something were wrong with the motor. You know, uh, I'm not, not a motor man, but uh, it quit running for sure. And, uh, you know, Texaco, uh, Haviland, Ford Thunderbird running really good. And, Led some laps, and I uh, thought we had a good shot at uh, running good in long runs, and that's the way it fell, but the way it goes. Well, you ran super, and uh, you'll turn that around. We will. I want to say hi to Kim. She's at home. Her and Terry's probably watching this race. We'll be ready to go to the lake tomorrow, girls.
Yeah, this is the father of a new baby. Y'all know that. Thanks. No, we didn't know that, but we sure do now, John. Thanks a lot. Okay. One win in 93 at Talladega back in May for Ernie, but not tonight. They didn't give one to go, so it's going to go to some more. Yeah. Do we, you think we ought to show that little bitty beat him out of the pits? How critical it was, or heck with it? Still didn't give one to go, so you got another one. Night racing coming to you. Night racing coming to you live here from Richmond, Virginia, and the Revestas aerial platform giving us this marvelous view of what Winston Cup racing looks like under the lights. First Grand National, now Winston Cup race under the lights was back in 1951 in Columbia, South Carolina. Old Rebel Monday won that one in a Studebaker, averaging 50 miles an hour. Considerably different. Let's get inside with a Derek Cope for just a moment. Derek, Ken Squire here at TBS Control. Can you read us? Yes, Ken, I read it loud and clear. How you going out there tonight? We see you're up in 15th. How's the car working? Well, you know, on the get-go, we, uh, we look pretty good. But uh, as we went a little farther in the run, the car got a little bit too tight for us. Uh, right in the middle of the corner, a little bit just past the middle. And, have to fight a little bit, but uh, we finish up right now, and uh, we'll see if we can get the boat angle forward up for a little farther. All right. Well, when you come by this time, you're going to be back under green. Good luck to you. 65 you. laps complete when they come by, and we'll be back to racing after the first caution of the day. Dick Trickle is on pit road. A black flag on him for passing on pit road. Is that right? Passing the paddle. He got out there. They put up the lollipop, and he missed it. It simply says stop or go, and he hit the stop side, so they brought it back around. Bobby Hillen's car, as they line up on this restart. So he is a lap car down on the inside. Cars in the lead lap up there on the outside, ready for the break. And you're riding with them as they come to the line on the three-quarter mile Richmond International Raceway. Boy, did Walter, Walter get a jump oh, in. What a nice start. That was beneficial, the fact you see that kept rusty trapped with a lap car back there. So Walter got a good jump on that start. Waltrip and Wallace they combined to lead 312 laps of this race a year ago. Waltrip does run well here. As I mentioned earlier, four times he's faced a victory in this event. A lot of times here you'll see him qualify back in the pack with a good race setup and work his way to the front. As well as he qualifies in the right to the wall, he's going to be in the middle of this race. Here comes Wallace right back after him. He may have got himself an eight car length advantage, but now Wallace squeezes right up to make it about two car lengths and less than that as they come off from turn two. Take a look at the Napa running order after 64 and 400 laps have been completed. There are your leaders going down into turn three. It seemed as though earlier, the longer the 17 car ran of Waltrip, the better it got. 
and the two might have given up a little bit. We'll have to see if they've worked on Rusty's car to where he can go over and get out there and run these fast laps on long runs. Well, just Bill Elliott's back there in 16th, and Earnhardt has dropped to 20th now. No later standing. Rusty's out there in the Walter crew. <laughs> And they, he's making it work. They switched it around. They, they might have learned something about that outside lane. Rusty Wallace on the outside, in front for the Pontiac. Chevrolet in second, and it's Ford in third. Neil Bonnet, Ken Squire, top side tonight with Randy Pemberton, Dick Bergman, Johnny Hayes, bringing to the action of the 36th annual $700,000. Another genuine draft, 400 here. Old fairgrounds in Richmond, Virginia. Looking pretty spiffy these days. Take a look at Ted Musgrave. Remember, he started as a provisional in this event. You see Jimmy Spencer right there in the fall. That number 55 is not having a good time here at all. They had to take the provisional. And 12, the Bobby Allison car is smoking. Jimmy Spencer's car up on the outside. Look at this battle for second place now. As Mark Martin in the six begins to strut his stuff. Waltrip fights him off, and then Martin's right back on the inside. Boy, you, you know, Waltrip likes that outside lane, but did you see that six jump when he stood on the throttle? And here comes Walter back on that outside. You really work the car over more on that inside. Jumping on that throttle, abusing those tires with that six. Stomping on him, and he's getting a good bite. Look at him roll through. Right in the middle out when he mashes gas is when he really accelerates. On board with Mark Martin now in second position and chasing Rusty Wallace down the back straightaway into three. Dramatic picture. Viral camera here in that Mark Martin car. Remember, Martin is working on a modern day record of five wins in a row. The last time it happened was back in the old days when they had a longer schedule. Back in 1971, Bobby Allison won five in a row and Richard Petty five in a row. But since then, Four drivers have won four races in a row. Nobody's ever made it five. That's what Martin is trying to do here tonight. If he can keep this thing rumbling. Well, Ken, it's kind of looking over Mark Martin's shoulder right there. That tack was going way past 8,000 RPM. <laughs> Jack Roush does not mind twisting his motors. And it, the thing, I think, what's happened is earlier they were blowing up. Now they've got it staying together. And, boy, there's something to deal with. Have you got a gear? Have you got a lower one, I guess, is the is the question being asked out there. If you're superstitious, that 10th starting position has never paid off for anyone here at Richmond. That's where Mark Martin started tonight. Ken, let's go down to Randy. The PSS if he's found out what this problem is with Earnhardt. Well, I'll tell you guys, uh, Earnhardt, we knew he had a problem before. The car was pushing. What they decided to do was go ahead and put a rubber in the right rear, stiffen that right rear up a little bit so Dale could drive it through the corners. They didn't want the race to come to them because, frankly, they were not too far from going a lap down, probably another 30 laps or so. So they stiffened up the right rear, put one of these rubbers in, give Earnhardt a little bit of freedom so he could drive that race car. And uh, I talked to Will Lynn, one of the crew members. He said it's doing a little better. He's picked up about seven more spots. So a rubber on the right rear for Earnhardt, and uh, he's doing much better. And uh, he has moved into 14th with that last move that he made. You see him putting a lap on Musgrave. Musgrave is a lap down and is running about 31st on the field right now. Not a good night for Musgrave at all. 30th position showing Musgrave in the 55, the U.S. Air car, slipping back some more here. That's an old car, I think in 91. They're still waiting on a new short track car. They hope to have it for North Wilkesboro, but he took a provisional starting berth in the end of the field to even get in this thing tonight. You see Bill Elliott right there behind Earnhardt. Elliott really if anyone needs to get up and mix up Elliott, their car is really strong. He's going to get up there and try to get to the front. That battle is about six seconds back from the leader. So we'll take a quick break here from Richmond International Raceway. Join us is the airship Shamu here at Richmond International Raceway, watching a whale of a race. Yes, I'm right here, close. Got a crash, Allison. 12, Spencer. Right, I understand that. Allison. 
Bobby's downstairs with his mother watching the race. He'd been smoking. I think it was a tire rubbing. He probably blew the tire. Or it might not have. What did they say happened to him? Yes. Mm. What's all that That'd about? I'll be fine. Yep. Thank you. As you see, we're under caution again. We're completing lap 63, but back on lap 60, the two-time national modified champion, Jimmy Spencer out of Berwick, Pennsylvania, climbing out of his car and not happy as he gets out. He's okay. I think they dragged him out. He didn't like to be dragged. Anyway, he's away from the car. Let's take a look at what happened up here in turn number two. Remember we said that car had been smoking some? Well, watch right here. Can we pick it up after he's already turned the car around and it backed up in the wall and hit the driver's side? We had, you know, word of smoke. It could have either been the engine or tire rubbing and it finally blew the tire. Earnhardt in the pits and I said 63. Let me correct myself. It is lap 83. Here's Randy Pember. I'll tell you, Earnhardt's in again, guys. Uh, they wanted him to come in the last lap, but uh, the communication level just wasn't there. Uh, they thought about putting a, a rubber, I believe, in the left front. I didn't see it happen. It went in the right front is what happened. They changed four tires, and Earnhardt's down and away. So two rubbers in that car. They're making some wholesale changes on it. I thought that they'd do it with air pressure, but uh, he was a little bit further out than that. But they're working on it. Rick Mass, Jimmy Means now come in as we see Earnhardt coming back on the track. Spencer was running in 11th when he had this altercation with the turn two concrete and brought out caution number, what, two or three of them of the event. That's caution number two. First caution ran seven laps. So while they're clearing up that uh, Jimmy Spencer, and, and incidentally, Bobby Allison is here tonight. He's right down in the suite below us with his mother Kitty watching the race. I bet he's not too tickled about that. Let's uh, go down and talk with Rick Benjamin. All right, thank you, Ken Squire. We're here in the STP Pit Communication Center with Johnny Hayes, and we're going to take a look at some information that you may not have heard of yet this week you know this is the time of the racing season johnny when the fans think of it as silly season well this season is a little bit different we've had two of the real heroes of this sport depart in tragic fashion we're calling it a season of transition and we're going to show you just some of the changes that have come along so far this all was put in motion of course when alan kulwicki tragically perished in a plane crash earlier in the year so that opened up the seat in car number seven right now it's jimmy hensley but next year jeff bodine going to take over yes jeff jeff bought the team he will be the driver what happens to Jimmy Hensley? Nobody knows for sure. He's done a great job in the car, yeah. and he's just on standby hoping something will come open. Lots of rumors about a lot of these teams. We're going to run through some other ones for you. Of course, the second tragedy of the year, the passing of Davey Allison after the helicopter crash. That opened up the 28 car. Robbie Gordon, Lake Speed, took a shot at the ride. Now it's Ernie Irvin after buying out the contract. That's given a guy who's not very well known, Jeff Purvis of Clarksville, Tennessee, a chance. Well, Jeff Purvis is well known inside the sport. He's been a great racer his whole life, great dirt champ, also a great ARCA competitor. So a new way to get in, maybe come in through the ARCA ranks now. That's the story that really made a lot of news here in the past week. Purvis now with that ride permanently. Let's take a look at some other situations now. Car 15, the Bud Moore car for next year. We know Jeff Bodine is going to drive the seventh car. We understand Lake Speed is going to take over the Bud Moore ride in 1894. But what about Lake Speed's own team? Well, Lake Speed has signed a contract. He's in that ride for sure. Who's going in Lake's car? It's probably going to be a rental situation. Someone wanting an opportunity to learn how to drive a race car. I think Lake will rent it to him. <laughs> Maybe make a little money on the side. Now, let's take a look at some other situations. 
What's going to happen with the Rick Hendrick team? Well, we know that Terry Labonte is moving with the Kellogg sponsorship into car number five. Ricky Rudd takes his Tide sponsorship and forms a new team. We don't know the car number or much really about that situation yet. No, but it's uh, it's all settled. They have the sponsorship. They're not too concerned. Once you have the money, you can race. Talked with Rick Hendricks earlier today. All his teams are firm. He has three teams. Everything has Jeff Gordon, the seven-year contract. Boy, is that a hot deal. He's uh, he's done a great job. Schrader's home free. We're in good shape. Rick and, Hendricks and is Terry Labonte in the number five car with Kellogg sponsorship there. Much more to talk about in this situation. We'll be back at Richmond for more of the Miller Genuine Draft 400 in just a moment. Hey, racing fans. Budweiser asks, who won? October 20th, 1985, North Carolina Motor Speedway in Rockingham. Terry Labonte in the 44 car off the pole led the early portion of this grueling 500-mile event, but he couldn't hold back the charge of Cale Yarbrough in the 28. The 33 of Harry Gant, also in contention. Gant started fifth. He battled with the leaders all day long in this event. Another driver waiting in the wings in the 11, Darrell Waltrip. Waltrip and Ron Bouchard here in the 47 staged a fierce battle to the checkered flag, but who won? the answer in a moment. You there, Randy? Yeah. Uh, Neil, yeah. uh, I said they, they, they might have gone ahead and put it in the right front. What happened was they couldn't have done it without losing a lap. So they changed four. They came back in, put the rubber in the left front. So they got one in left front, right rear, and then they came back in to check it with a flashlight. It's in there. So, okay. I mean, this team is intense down here, you know? Okay, man. No, it's not going this lap. They still got a safety crew out in turn two. Okay, Hensley's under the hood. One to go. I think my mic's still open, too. Oh, he's got a valve spring, I believe. I, I heard a valve spring. Seven. Something. The seven is on seven. It's flat, for sure. The seven is flat. All righty. Engine flat. Could be a spark plug or something, but I believe that's a that's a some of the valve spring. Lost the cylinder on the seven. If you guessed Daryl Waltrip, you're right. Here's what happened. Cale Yarbrough seemed to have the event well in hand until he spun and crashed with late speed driving the 75, the 18 driven at that time by Tommy Ellis. The crash left the door open for Ron Bouchard and Darrell Waltrip to battle it out to the finish. With 31 laps left, Waltrip surged past Bouchard underneath and held on for his 67th career Winston Cup victory. Who won? Brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers with that clean, crisp, cold taste. Nothing beats a bud. We're back with you at Richmond International Raceway. There are 92 laps complete of the 400 to be run, and I think they put a black flag out for jumping on the start on car two, Rusty Wallace. What, what do you think, Neil? Well, I tell you what, a call I, on the board. You know, they just started the race and they they got a jump there, but I, you know, I don't know what the call is on Rusty. They definitely got his number on the board. You see, Walter Pier is running in second. Mark Martin is in third. Kyle Petty is fourth. 
Running fifth is Bodine. That would be uh, Jeff Bodine. Brett Bodine is in sixth. There's the two cars still out there. And they still have his number up on the uh, on the starter stand down here. I tell you what, Ken, they said he break. They called it a brake check on the restart. He, he got in the gas, got off. But I don't think he's coming in. You know, he's leading this. He thinks he's leading the race. Now they're putting the black flag out with a cross on it. That means they pick up his four car. See that black flag right there in the flagman's hand? There's a black flag. Tells you that flag with the X on it. When that comes on your car, they pick up your scorecard. You can run for three days. They just quit counting laps. Let's see if he's going to come in now. He is. He's coming in this time. He's rolling down pit road. Wallace giving up the lead. This puts Waltrip first. Martin second. Kyle Petty in the third. Then the Bodines. Jeff and Brett. Fourth and fifth. Terry Labonte is in sixth. Look at this struggle. Here's Martin down on the inside. And Mark puts that Ford to work with the Chevy up on the high side. Here's Johnny Hayes. Ken, I have Jimmy Spencer with me. Jimmy, what happened? Well, Johnny cut a right rear tire down. You know, no fault of the tires. The car was smoking the right rear pretty bad. We got together with another car. Also hit the wall and got straight away. You know, uh, no fault of the tires. Just a dumb mistake by the driver, you know. But I tell you something, the Meineke car is running real well. You know, uh, after the top 10, really thought I had something for him tonight, but not sitting in here. Don't you love a driver that will say it's a dumb mistake by the driver? I'd love to have this guy drive. You good guy. You good guy. I right. love all Hey, John. John Hayes, ask yes. him, John, ask him uh, what happened when he got out of the car. He didn't look what, too happy. What happened when you got out of the car? You didn't look uh, too happy. Well, I, you know, I was all right. I'm not hurt or anything. And, and uh, you know, the excellent job that the medical workers do, they grabbed a the hold of me. And I wasn't expecting it. And I fell back. They pulled me back. And I wasn't ready to come back. And I fell out of the car. I didn't get hurt. I didn't bump my head. I never lost consciousness or anything, you know. Those cement walls are hard, but I got a hard head, too. Yeah, he's such a dainty, pretty little thing. I'd hate to try to lift him out of a car. Thanks, guys. Back to y'all. I tell you what, Spencer, he's a racer now. He, when you make a mistake, you just make a mistake. He's talking about the tire smoking. He thought he should possibly come in. They just went ahead and it blew out. And talking about a blowout. Here comes the six to the front. Oh, yeah. Six <laughs> he's race. He's tough when he gets up there. Six race in a row, Neil, that Martin has led. He's led 17 of 23 this year. Yeah, but just to keep the fans aware of what happened, Rusty Wallace did honor that black flag. He came down pit road and he did not lose a lap. He's about a quarter lap. There he is. He's about a quarter lap in front of the leaders. So if he can maintain that position and get the caution back, catch caution, he'll be back without a lot of problem. But I'm sure he was upset with that call. Well, that means he's on the tail end of that lead lap. He's about a half lap down behind Dave Marcus, who's trailing the field. Now there's first and second spot. Here comes Waltrip working again on the high side. There you see uh, Trickle's car there, and now we're looking for the two car. And it's going to be a while as he comes around the whole field. Meandering down out of turn four here. And we have car number two. Yeah, he'll be coming here. There's the, there's a two. Now watch the interval this way. And there comes the leaders. Yep. So he's got about a quarter lap, and he's going to run just as hard as if he were trying to win the race right now, not to go that lap down and catch a caution. Can't be too happy down there in the uh, Wallace pits right now. We mentioned Kyle Petty is just behind him in third. Fourth is Jeff Bodine. Fifth is Brett Bodine. Terry Labonte in sixth. Ricky Rudd in seventh. 15 cars coming down pit road. I see him turn down turn three. Four head on pit car. road. And the word is he's leaking water. Car number 15 coming in. They say that uh, Bodine, fourth place car, is leaking water. Yeah, they said the thing is overheating. In. Oh, here they go with the hood. Boy, that's not good news when they start that. And he's going to go down a lap right now, Jeff Bodine. Well, this early in the race when one's overheating. You can't doctor that. You might can fix one where to run a few laps and finish a race. But look at the water coming out the overflow in the left rear. Doesn't look good right now for Jeff Bodine. They're working very slowly. Here's Mark Martin out in front. What are you doing now that you weren't doing earlier in the season, Mark? Things are just working 
You know, I always have trouble with that. Remember how that was exactly what was said about Gant with that cambered rear end? Then we found out a few months later, really they caught on. Remember when Bill Elliott won those 11 races in 85, and they said it was his time, then we found out that aerodynamically that car was slipperier than anything we'd ever seen, Neil? Ken, any time in this global of racing, when the car's as close as they are and somebody starts dominating, you say, boy, I hope it's mechanical. I hope they have found a camber rear end. I hope they found this or that. The other question mark is Jack Roush fixing to do exactly. this series, what he did to Ken Ham racing. Total domination, win Daytona seven times, 24-hour race seven or eight times. Anything he's got into, he's worked at it until he totally mastered it and nobody could touch him. The question is now, do they have a little trick secret or are they fixing to do this for a long time? I think they are fixing to do it for a while and I think they have found something. It'll be interesting to know in the months to come just what everybody else discovers. It's no question that Mark Martin has been ready to win these races. He's dedicated. He does a lot of physical work to be able to stay in that car and work hard. And now he's winning a lot of races. Roush has said that uh, Mark has uh, been an entirely different driver than any other driver he's ever worked with. And he says, Mark has taught me some things that were totally unknown. We've grown up together in the last five or six years. And now it's beginning to work. Shamu looking down those big eyes there it is over richmond virginia got an eye on mark martin right now in front of the leader so he's pulling away a bit yeah thank you that's a big help for us thank you yes sir okay black oh that's great they're black flag the 15. He's spilling water all over the track. He's coming down. He'll be out of it after this, probably. Tomorrow on TBS, the Braves wrap up a weekend series in San Diego. The Braves at the Padres. That's live, 4 o'clock Eastern, on TBS tomorrow. And we're going to update you on the scores tonight. Those old Braves are half a game in front right now after San Francisco lost this afternoon, Neil. Chop, chop, chop. They're coming. <laughs> 116 laps, chop, chop, chop. 87 miles are now complete here at Richmond, Virginia, as Mark Martin is uh, doing the chopping, just cutting this field of shreds right now. But the guy that's even faster is Rusty Wallace. What a great shot off Derek Cope's car as he comes down that straightaway, about 150, 60 miles an hour in that range, giving you an idea just how close they run, how consistently they get out there, stay right on that wall, hold that line, keep those RPMs up. There's your leader, Martin, with the advantage over Waltrip. And drawing away at the present time is that car that's out back. I'm talking about the number two. He's about to collect Marcus and Phil Parsons and some others and begin to work his way back through the field. Dick Bergren has a pit report for us. 
I'm with Jeff Bodine. His car is behind the wall. There's water pouring out of this thing absolutely everywhere. The crew thinks the problem is a blown head gasket. Jeff, any chance they can get this thing back out? Uh, I didn't hear you, Dick, but I get, we're leaking water, so I'm pushing water out of the engine. We've had this problem for two years. Uh, they seem to keep those head gaskets sealed up. I want to say something. Uh, Tim Robertson with the Family Channel gave me a donation today for my bobsled effort of $100,000. I want to thank him. Uh, that's a great thing. That's going to put us in the Olympics, hopefully with gold medals in uh, Lillehammer this winter. This guy never gives up, does he? He's, a, he's always interested in racing, even when he's behind the wall. <laughs> yeah, even if it's the one that he doesn't feel too comfortable sitting in either. Take a look at this 5 and 11 squabble. This is for seventh spot. Here's Elliot on the inside and Ricky Rudd. Understand that his number next year will be 10. Still have the tied colors. They're talking real questionable about number four, but I think they're looking at the number 10 car with uh, the tag Well, you know, we talked about that earlier, all these changes going on with the tragedy we had with the two top drivers and then start shutting them back down. I've never seen the sport make so many moves as we'll see at the end of the season. And not only that, during the season. And it really isn't silly. It, it is a time of transition in NASCAR. Taking a look at the Napa standings a little further back in there, you see Kenny Wallace, rookie back in third place in the standings, currently showing a good stout 15th, and all those cars are in the lead lap. In fact, 25 cars, as you look at these standings from Napa, are in the lead lap at the present time. You see Harry Gant's name, remember 91 when he won this race as part of that four string that he had? Well, right now, Mark Martin is trying to move into new territory. The first man in modern stock car history since they cut that schedule back to 30 races to win five in a row. Can he stay there? Well, right now he's staying there in front of Darrell Waltrip in second and Kyle Petty in third. Very consistent laps. You know, Martin works out, tries so hard to keep himself in the best possible physical trim as hard as Jack Roush keeps those cars in top mechanical order. You know, we're talking about top mechanical order, the, uh, the car Mark Martin lead right. Here's the team car. Watch this 16 car when he goes down in the corner. Now, watch when he backs off the throttle here. Every lap he's been going in the corner. Well, he must be coming in. The thing has just been really popping out the tailpipes. He's had a big blaze out of that thing as he enters it. Really been doing it in turn one. We'll see. Follow him down and see if it does it again. But he has some kind of problem. Might be a crackhead or whatever. I think they're blazing all the way through the corner. It's not going to do. Sometimes a crackhead would do that, but that extended fire like that, something seems to be wrong. Looks like those old GMC truck engines they used to race on the dirt 30 years ago, huh? throwing balls of fire down the track. Take a look at this back. Here is the 25 car, Max Schrader, going for 10th against Rick Mast. Mast right there in that car number one in a good struggle. Rockbridge, Daz, Virginia, Rick Mast. And the black and white number one looking for a good finish. Good, consistent runner. Hasn't had much luck in the past couple of years and knows you have to make your own here. That battle is about uh, 14 seconds back from Mark Martin out in front. And there you see Dale Earnhardt, or rather uh, Dale Jarrett, right there with him. And Dale Earnhardt right behind him. So to give you that again, that would be 10th Schrader, then 11th Mass, 12th Jarrett, 13th Earnhardt, 14th is Michael Waltrip, Kenny Wallace, 15th, Harry Gant, 16th. On board uh, with Jimmy Hensley, further back in the field. Well, we're watching now, this is the 15th, we just black flagged again. It's pumping water all the way around the racetrack, so they're bringing him back in. Seven car we're riding in here is the car that Jeff Bodine purchased for the race team, and he'll be driving it next year. That's the last car on the lead lap. He's in 25th position. Side number one. And here's Earnhardt beginning to scramble, rolling up through some machinery. They check. We Michael check the wall trip coming with him. Excuse me. That's fine, Ken. We check with Randy Pemberton on that last stop. They did put a rubber in the right rear, which would loosen the car up a little bit. That didn't help it enough. They put a rubber in the left front also to loosen it up even more. So they're struggling. That thing's not doing what he wants to do, and it'll make for a long night if they don't get it any better. Schrader 11th, Earnhardt 12th, and Michael Waldrop for 13th, the 14th belonging to Dale Jarrett in this particular portion of the race, which is 131 laps complete. Oh, we've got a 
big problem out here with the 75 getting turned around. Three cars caution coming out involved. Looks like the 44 car. Good tell you the 44. Rick Wilson Rick is Wilson. in it. No question that Todd Bodine in his second ride in that uh, Butch Mock car has gotten into that pretty good size. And there was a third car that drove off from it. It's that inside wall. There's both cars Going trying to move. Three. The 75 looks like he cranked up, moved a little bit. He can't go. Now the 44 is running again, but I believe he's got so much damage he's not going to be able to move. Third caution is out as they rumple up a couple out here. There's the 15 car checking with his brother there. Here's the 44 on the inside coming up off turn two. They get together right there, turn them around side by side, and they're headed for that inside wall. There's the leader, Mark Martin, just cleared the wreck. From another angle. This is after they've lost it. They're headed down that inside. We just saw Mark Martin clear the wreck. Wham, right in that inside wall. Boy. Mark Martin is now in the pits. Dick Bergman's there. All the leaders are in the pits, Ken, and Mark Martin, like everybody else, is going to take a four-tire change. This is a brand-new race car you're watching here. You might have thought he would have gone with one of the cars he had won with, but nope, something brand-new is good to polish. There we go. And Kyle Petty coming right with him. Maybe a bad sign for the people. He just made a chassis adjustment on that thing, trying to get it better. Here's Randy. Terry Labonte and Jeff Gordon, as well as Dale Earnhardt, were in up at this end. I, it seemed like the biggest loser on those pit stops uh, was the Terry Labonte team. I think they lost a few spots. No major changes, though. That accident was at lap 131. We're now working 133. Well, there you see the Rick Wilson car badly torn up. Looks like it could be the end of the day for Richard Petty's hopes. Here is Rick Wilson clambering out. Looks to be okay. And the early word is that things are all right on the younger of the Bodine brothers, Todd. So, at 1.34, if they come around this time, we'll pause for these messages and be back with you at Richmond. Tell you what that did, that put Rusty Wallace right back in it. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yep, you got plenty of time, Fred. They're going to be a minute cleaning that up. Yep. Can we take a look at that fence over there and see if they tore it up? Could you put it up for us? So they came in, then they, they hit it again a little further up. I don't believe the damage is top of is it? No. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Seventy-one thousand seats, every one of them sold since this past April at Richmond International Raceway, enjoying a beautiful night and a great race here in this seven hundred thousand dollar Miller Genuine Draft 400. With Neil Bonnet, I'm Ken Squire. Topside, we're in our third caution period, which came about on lap 131 with a two-car jam session going into turn number three. That looks like it's eliminated the STP car of Rick Wilson and Young. Todd Bodine driving the Butch Mark car as well, being towed away. Earlier today, Lieutenant Colonel Ron Hall presented the U.S. Air Force Reserve's Commander's Performance Award. 
Hello, Ken. Hi, racing fans. This is Lieutenant Colonel Ron Hall presenting another Air Force Reserve Commander's Performance Award. And if you're mechanically inclined, it, pick up the phone and call the Air Force Reserve Recruiting Office. They'd love to hear from you. We gave two Air Force Reserve Commander's Performance Awards earlier today to Mr. Ken Squire, Mr. Fred Ranstein. Ken, of course, being the host of the show and Fred behind the scenes as producer of the show. So congratulations to you, Ken and Fred. Now, with me today to receive the award is a man who started here winning in 1977 with his first Winston Cup race, Mr. Neil Bonnet. Thank you for being here. Please accept this award on behalf of the Air Force Reserve. It recognizes your abilities as a driver, your service to the uh, sport of racing and, your, and to NASCAR, and certainly uh, your TV exploits and uh, your new TV show winners. Congratulations, and please accept this on behalf of the Air Force Reserve. Carl, it's a great honor to accept this award, especially coming from a bunch of winners like the Air Force. It's a great honor. Thank you. I thought they were going to give you that award for that little job of flying you did at Talladega. That was I, I had it, Kim, but that crash landed and canceled it all out. <laughs> okay. We'll be back with more in a moment and for the restart here. 138 are complete. We're getting this field organized to go racing again at Richmond. Got a lot of their equipment, safety equipment, back in place. Hello, hello, hello. My headset's not very good. Water. No. I can hear you. Yes, Fred. Yes. One to go right now. One to go. Okay. Yeah, it's be fine. I can wait here. I need. I I, I don't use the other one. I just switch them out. Yeah, that back can start coming to me. Right here. I'm here. Race is just back under green. They come around a complete lap 142. They hit it at 141. And there you see Mark Martin out in front with Kyle Petty there. And as they scramble down into turn number one, the 18 car mixing it up with them. I think they have him on the tail end of that lap. Get this race resumed. Yeah, they're showing the 18 as a lap down. The 42 car is showing a lot of strength here right now. Jumping up through that traffic. He's right there behind Martin. 143 laps complete. 107 miles complete in this 400 lap event. And you see Mark Martin dominated. Looks like he wants to get himself that fifth Winston Cup victory in a row and set a modern day record. Several other drivers have scored four wins in the season, but to do it five times hasn't been done since 1971 when they were on the old schedule. If you look right here behind this group, there's Rusty Wallace just behind our North. There we go. We see the two car that caution put him right back in the middle of this thing. Uh, imagine he's driving with a vengeance after that black flag. He was running way faster when Mark Martin was leading the race. This two car was running faster laps than Martin. But he's having to come up through here after he was put back with that black flag. And up to 11 to spot. They'll deal with him for tonight, so. You see Bobby Labonte just in front of him in 10th spot, number 22. Wallace closing in on him. Dick Trickle down to the inside of that yellow car. 
They stack them almost three wide as Earnhardt tries the outside. Watching transmission change on Earnhardt after the final practice this afternoon has left them trying to gather back that finesse they usually have when the race starts. There goes Terry Labonte onto the bottom in car number 14 and makes a good move on 22-year-old Jeff Gordon out of Pittsburgh, Indiana, the leading rookie on the Winston Cup Tour. There's Gordon working that outside lane. Really good. Ooh, the five car got right back to 14 just a little bit. They capped a little bit in the left corner. Ooh, we see the 14 wiggling right there. A little bit of contact. With Earnhardt on the outside. Rudd driving up on the inside. The orange five. This battle is about three seconds behind the leader, Mark Martin. A look from on top at this struggle. See Bobby Hillen down the inside of 90. Jeff Gordon, 24, right beside him. And it really shows, you'll see off of this corner, it's a real easy, wide exit. You don't flirt with a wall a whole lot. You got a little bit of room. Not Big, much you don't. Look yeah, but that. you got that arc right there. But now watch this right here coming off turn two. You go down in turn one, pinch it down to the bottom, and these guys, if they won't turn not, they're going to jump out there right on top of that wall. See the car just fly out against the wall. A lot sharper turn the hardest part of the track. High above Richmond, our aerials today provided by Ray Vestas, the best in brakes. Petty second, Elliott third. Darrell Waltrip is in fourth. Brett Bodine is fifth. Gordon is in sixth in that 24 car. Right behind him comes the line of seven. You see Earnhardt in eighth. Let's go back up front. There you see Martin, and there you see the interval. He's pulling off between himself and Kyle Petty in second. At the speed in the last lap on car number six, 118 mile an hour average on this three-quarter mile track. Morgan Shepard getting ready to re-enter many, many laps down. Yeah, Dick Berger's done in the six-car pit. Let's go down there and see what's happening with the six. Well, Neil, everybody wants to know how come Mark Martin has winning all these races. I asked Jack Roush and he said, well, here's a piece of it right here in my hand. One of his classmates manufactures this 1800s replica Winchester knife. He's had it in his pocket for every one of the wins. Look at these knee pads. Steve Field is wearing those. Guess what? He's had those on his knees for every win. He says he's going to wear them for absolutely ever. Luck, they say, is playing a little bit of a role here. I don't know. I just can't believe a knife and a knee pad makes that turn 8,400 <laughs> RPM. And when he turns, it cuts. When he mashes the brake, it stops. They got a heck of a race car there. And I think one thing about it, we said, you know, here we are with a brand new race car. I want to up with something old. These guys build a used race car every week. They'd like to have you think that it's a matter of knee pads and jackknives and so forth. Look at Brett Bodine in the 26 car, in fifth spot. Holding his own for the moment, right beside him is Dale Jarrett. Going down a lap, and right comes Gordon behind that 26. About four seconds back from the leaders. But Bodine having another good run here at Richmond tonight. Take a look at Bill Elliott. Didn't see much of him tonight, and he has squared off in third spot and is running very well right now. He's running third place. That's the best they've run in a long time. They must have a good pit stop. Guys got him out there. He's able to hold that position now. Kenny Wallace has gone back behind the wall. Junior Johnson looking on as Bill Elliott maintains that third position. Kenny Wallace has gone back behind the wall in car number 40. Take a look at this struggle. He has Earnhardt in the three. Works on the bottom side. He's in eight. Terry Labonte in number 14 and seven. Ricky Rudd is in ninth in the car five. And that 24 car in six is Gordon. We saw the two of Rusty Wallace coming up back there, too. Good pack of cars right here. They've been running like this six or eight laps. Earnhardt's tried repeatedly to get around Labonte. He couldn't do it. Labonte's been working on 24. Seems to level out. That group is running just about the best they can do right now. Earnhardt in eight. Good three-way battle. Rusty Wallace closing in on Ricky Rudd. Battle for ninth. Jarrett pinned on the outside. Schrader back there in 11th. In 10th is Wallace. And then in that ninth 
It's Ricky Rudd at number five. Bill Elliott getting around Kyle Petty. Elliott is now in the second spot. He got up on him coming off the fourth turn and just jumped out in front of him. Elliott, we said earlier in the show, Elliott needed to run good. They've been off the pace. Maybe this is the night. So, at lap 160, Bill Elliott. Looks like the Elliott of old back in the mid-80s as he closes on Mark Martin. Corporation, makers of Wizard again. <laughs> makers of STP Engine Tree help stop engine wear before you start. And by high. Yes, I do. Will I continue or just shut up when I get done? Okay. That's a very polite way to put it. Uh, Walter's passing Kyle Petty for yep. third. Promotional fees and considerations have been paid by the following. First Brands Corporation, makers of STP engine treatment, help stop engine wear before you start. And by Heilig Myers Furniture Company, the proud sponsor of Bobby Hillen's Ford Thunderbird. And by True Value Hardware Stores, got a tough job to do? They'll see you through it. You can do it with True Value Hardware Stores. And by High Royal Automotive Chemicals. Technically advanced, performance tested, and value priced. And by SeaWorld, bringing you airship Shamu, SeaWorld's traveling goodwill ambassador. Here's Mark Martin at lap 167. Continuing to build on that lead as he goes for his fifth win. Now here's Rusty Wallace. He's moved under Ricky Rudd, and he is challenging Dale Earnhardt for eighth position. Wallace coming on with a vengeance here as we get down toward the midway mark. Defending champion, Rusty Wallace. Got a consultation flag. Had to come on pit road. Nearly a lap down. Has fought his way back into this thing. And here you see him fighting to take eighth spot away. From Dale Earnhardt, the man who's going for his sixth Winston Cup championship in the 1993 season. Meanwhile, Elliott and Waltrip at Waltrip closing in on Bill Elliott. And this is for second place, Ken, because they just got around Kyle Petty, so this is the battle for second place. And they're three seconds back to the leader. Waltrip to the inside. Elliott in this race has never had much luck. Of course, he's won in the earlier race. It's now held in March, but fourth on three occasions. 83, 87, and 90 is the best that Bill Elliott could stitch together in this event. Here he is, wheel to wheel with Waltrip down the inside. Waltrip going to second, and Elliott fighting right back and brings that Ford off that second corner. 
Boy, what a bike that thing has. Yeah, and that's a tough move to make on the inside. We're talking about that being a tight corner, that inside line, you pitch it down. He's got a better chance at him on the inside coming off this corner. you got a sweep and turn. It doesn't bog your car down as bad. C held a lot better line, but now he's going to have to pay the price on this end. He has to pinch his car down. If Elliott can get in the throttle, he'll make that big jump on him again right here. Here comes Elliott pulling back on that side. Walter held his line a little bit better. Now he's going to have that advantage on this big arc in corner, so Walter should be able to make a pretty decent run in right here. That's the way they complete lap 173 in this war for second position as Martin continues to lead by three and three tenths of a second. Here you see Kyle Petty. Running forward just behind him. About 150. They step off for just a moment. Describe getting into that corner here. Well, we're watching Walter right here. He's coming at his front straight away. And you drive so much deeper in this corner, you think the other can is still in the throttle, in the throttle, in the throttle. They roll out way down in the center right here. And it is just wide open. Not, not any feet in the gas, just stand in the throttle. And it looks like it's going to knock that wall down there and the car will cut. These things will do things you think they want. An average person getting there, you say it's not going to make this turn. But these things are capable of making turns you wouldn't believe, and it feel like it's going to knock the fence down. And even with that five-point seat belt and that special seat belt in, it still feels like it's going to throw you over on the passenger side. Well, it does. It sends your head for a ride over there. Well, you got everything tied down but your head. That's where you see these drivers going these big head braces on the side of their seats. Waltrip, 30 top tens and 38 starts at Richmond, and he's having a phenomenal night tonight but not as good as Mark Martin's having. The Jack Roush car is on rails and pulling away. It's three and five tenths of a second by which car number six, the Jack Roush Valvoline Ford is pulled out in front. Now there are the gentlemen that have won four consecutive Winston Cup races in the modern area. In 1976, Cale pulled it off, Waltrip in 81, Earnhardt, Gant, Elliott, Mark Martin, all great names for the era, and it's Mark Martin tonight going for number five. Back to 71, if you're just joining us. The last time anyone won five, and that was when the season was considerably longer, and in that year, both Richard Petty and Bobby Allison succeeded in five wins in a row. What were you doing in 71? I was racing, but it wasn't up here. I was going to little bitty racetracks all over the country running back then. Did you see Jack Roush on top of that toolbox in? You know, he's so used to leading races, I don't believe he gets excited anymore. I think he's getting excited about this. Well, he's got his knife in his pocket. Nothing can happen. <laughs> I think he's probably got it firmly pressed with his forefinger and thumb right about now. It's now four and five tenths of a second. 4.5 between the sixth and the rest of the field. He's saying, good night, nurse. He's gone. I'll see you. Ken, let me tell you what. If the race fans sat here wondering what could this six be doing, to do this week in and week out. What have they done to do this? Can you imagine what those race teams are? As close as Winston Cup racing is nowadays, they're sitting there saying, hey man, what are these guys doing to us? I saw last night, even in the Bush race, the Winston Cup people stayed over and watched that Bush car run to see if they could find something out. Take a look at the whole field here. Pick out your favorite as they come by. Come on, Bonnet, you're down there all the time. What do you think Roush is doing the rest of the Nevin caught on? And I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just happened that they've got it that good. I don't know. But everybody's hoping they've got something mechanical that everybody else is going to find out about. But they might just come together and it's going to be something to deal with for a while. Well, unless something untoward goes off on car number six, it's now four and eight tenths of a second. Like a bandit in the night, Mark Martin continuing to attack in our live coverage here on TBS watching Martin trying to do what no one has done in the modern stock car era, win five in a row. Junior Johnson looks a little determined to change that.
atención. Okay, now that's a different. That's in bush racing, but I don't guess it matters, does it? No. Okay. That's a fun with. Got you. at Richmond International Raceway. Some of our fans taking a break, getting a snack as we're about midway tonight in the Miller Genuine Draft 400. So far, it's been a Mark Martin benefit show or at least the last 100 laps or so. Great to have you with us tonight live here on TBS. Rick Benjamin from the STP Big Communication Center. We pulled Johnny Hayes away from Jimmy Spencer. You were having such a good time with Spencer. I didn't know if you'd ever come back and see us to talk more about some of these driver changes. Spencer's awesome, isn't he? <laughs> he sure is as we watch the leaders work. Tell us about this guy. Hank Parker, this is one of my neighbors. He's one of the world's greatest bass fishermen. I don't have a clue what his fish is doing there. <laughs> well, I tell you what. I'll what about it, Neil? I can tell you what the deal is. Hank Parker's a big friend of all a lot of the race car drivers. He goes fishing with a bunch of guys, big sportsmen. He's bought a Bush race car. Really? He's going to put his little, he's won the Bassmaster Championship a couple of times. Two and times, now he's going to jump on his racing. Champion. <laughs> Hank's not real smart, folks. Uh-oh. Well, we'll look for him out there. But let's take a look at some of the upcoming driver changes in Winston Cup. Now, we know that Wally Dallenback is leaving Jack Roush. Ted Musgrave takes the chair. What about Wally? Well, Wally's rumored to several different cars. I think he's just waiting to see how everything falls, but he'll end up somewhere. Richard Petty's team? It's one of the rumors. As a matter of fact, I followed up on that. I talked with Richard Petty and Rick Wilson. Rick Wilson pointed out quickly that he had a one-year contract and he would evaluate it after it was over. Richard Petty made it perfectly clear. When I decided to put someone else in my car, we'll let you know. <laughs> the king as, has spoken. As only the king can yeah. do. Let's show you some of the other changes that are coming up as we look ahead to 1994. The 41 car, the Larry Hedrick team, we know that Phil Parsons is leaving there in a Bush Grand National style. Robert Presley's going to move there. Yes, there's been no announcements on that officially, but I think everyone believes that Robert will be replacing Phil. What happens to Phil? Still going to be a lot of rides come open, yeah. and he's one of those key guys that can jump into something else. Phil Parsons back in action this year in the 41 car. Other driver changes uh, likely to come ahead as we see Robert Presley will be taking over that spot in the 41 as far as we know now. That leaves the uh, DK Ulrich car, the 55 open at this point. Yes, and I talked with uh, the people there, and again, they're going to hold their options open, see who's available, because they may have two or three people to choose from. It's a good race car. Musical chairs, and there's a lot of changes still to come. A couple of drivers who are going to move up from Bush Grand National to Winston Cup next year. Yes, I think Joe Nemechek is going to do his own team. Yeah. So that's good, because he can own the team, and he doesn't have to get fired as a driver. <laughs> Ward Burton's definitely coming up. He's uh, coming up with a Hardy sponsorship. And uh, Hoosier Tire. The Hoosier Tire yes. deal will be his yes, also. Yes, exactly next year. right. That'll be the Hoosier Tire car. So that'll be really interesting to watch, too. And there are other changes we'll talk about, I guess, a little later on. Riding with Mark Martin here as we review uh, the changes and the transition that's going on. Pretty awesome how many changes are happening as we look forward to 1994 and that first race at Daytona. 195 laps complete, five away from halfway, and Martin's lead is being cut into. Waltrip is definitely closing. Remember how it was four and a half seconds? Throw that one away. It's now three and four tenths of a second as Waltrip and Elliott are definitely closing in. I guess he's run the wheels off that number six. I'm not so sure. I think Mark was just lonely out there. And he wants a company. <laughs> he's so tired of running around out wants there by friend. himself. Wants a friend. But yeah, I, right. you know, uh, we've seen Mark get out there in the bush race last night. He'd lead the race in 
somebody to come up on him and all of a sudden he'd squirt that thing out there and get a two-second lead. They'd close in, he'd move out. He's so used to running these races. It's kind of like a golf. Some guys are good leaders. Mark Martin's an excellent leader. He gets out there, he runs the pace he, he needs to to stay out front. Well, the guy that's just cleaning house right now continues to be Rusty Wallace. After uh, losing time being sent to pit road, he's come back with a vengeance. And right now, Wallace has got himself up in the fifth spot. He's taken Bodine. He has taken the number 24 of Jeff Gordon. And he continues to be as quick as anything on the racetrack. Here's Wallace looking for Kyle Petty in the 42 right now. Martin stays first, Darrell Waltrip second, Bill Elliott third, Kyle Petty fourth, and this man, Rusty Wallace, is fifth in our live coverage here on Turner Sports tonight. It's about six and seven tenths of a second from leader Martin Martin back to Rusty Wallace on this three-quarter mile track right now. In seventh, there you find Jeff Gordon in eighth is Rick Nash. Ninth out here is Terry Labonte, and tenth is Earnhardt. 11th is Ricky Rudd, 12th is Schrader, Gant is running 13th as we come to halfway. We are at halfway. Mark Martin takes the halfway award tonight. He in car number six, about to put another lap on Dave Marcus as you ride with him going down the back straightaway. If you're just joining us, 71,000 seats here at Richmond, Virginia. Every one of them sold since last April, and what a race they're seeing as Mark Martin tries to rewrite stock car history books and win five in a row. Hasn't been done since 1971. Hasn't been done in the modern era of stock car racing. And the young man from Batesville, Arkansas, is determined to do that here tonight. And we're with you all the way to see if he can pull it off. And I'll tell you what, he's headed in that direction. <laughs> Boy, look at him. Rusty Wallace just drive right around Kyle Petty. That Kyle's was a, been running good. Oh, my heart move. He just went up the outside and flew by. Yeah, I'm sure Rusty knows if he can get that thing back to the front. He was the man leading the race to that black flag. And he was a little upset with the call. So I'm telling you, once he gets there, he's going to be rooting around to go to the front. Now it's his sponsor. And there's the sponsor of the event. And here comes Earnhardt around Ricky Rudd back there in 10th spot. They've been dicing for a while, first one and then the other, and now it's Earnhardt again, taking the high side, and on the rim ride, collects that spot back again. That's Earnhardt heads Austin to run, now he takes it back. Yeah, that's him, but that's a half a lap behind. That's a good indication of the way Mark Martin is running. They're just about a half a lap behind Mark Martin. Well, guys, I'll tell you, uh, Steve Neal just came over, crew chief for Mark Martin. He said, uh, Mark, let's just take it easy now. Let's ride and take care of our stuff. I listened to the scanner back at Darlington a week ago. Steve keeps him so calm in the race car, and he sounds very calm tonight. I believe Mark's running about 90%, but as we stand right now, no question about it, the two fastest cars on the racetrack, Rusty Wallace and Mark Martin, but Mark is not going to race until he's got somebody to race with. I need to check that interval between first and second. It's about six and a half seconds between Rusty Wallace back there in fourth and Mark Martin as your leader. And we'll check that interval between Martin and second place man, Darrell Waltrip. Bill Elliott stays in third right there with Waltrip. Six laps are now complete. Take a look further back here. Kent, you know, earlier we were speculating, wondering what happened with that black flag. Let's go down to Dick Berger and see if he can tell us why they made that call. Well, Neil, you called it correctly from on top. They thought that perhaps Rusty Wallace had given the field a brake check. The crew down here vehemently argued that's Ooh. not what happened, but that was what the penalty was all about. Dick, you know, they called us up here and said they thought it was a brake check. It's That's just a judgment call. You know, Rusty was on the pole. And as he tried to get off the corner there, he just got a good shot. He called it that. And, you know, it's a tough call to make, but he's, Rusty's having to pay the price, but he's coming back. A little short breaking was the call. He stood on it a little to discombobulate the rest of the field. That's a great short track trick. I'm sure you never did that, Neil. Well, I did it several times, but I never got black flag. <laughs> you never got caught. Always make the guy behind you look awful when you do that. <laughs> Uh, here comes Mark Martin putting another lap down, this time on Strickland. He continues to shake, ramble, and roar around Richmond.
المرأة He's moving up. Two hundred fourteen laps, one hundred sixty miles in this four hundred lap race, and this three quarter mile track have been completed. Waltrip's in second for Martin. In third spot, it's Bill Elliott having a great night here at Richmond. In fourth spot is Rusty Wallace, and he's the quickest thing out here. And in fifth place, Kyle Petty. That was the rundown after two eleven. The board is now showing two fifteen. There's Mark Martin leading. Wallace about four laps ago was at six five behind him. Then he cut it to six two, then six flat. Now it's five nine as Rusty Wallace back in fourth place. Now it's five seven as he closes even tighter. And in between Wallace and Martin are Waltrip and Elliott running second and third. Now there they are. Darrell Waltrip in that second spot trying to lap Dave Marcus and right with him comes Bill Elliott in the 11th. One of two short track races that Bill Elliott won was right here at Richmond. Always did well in the super speedways. Cuts it to 3-5. Taking big chunks out of it right now. The question is, we just heard from the pits, Steve Bill told Martin to save his stuff, keep the car under. We're, we're going to wait and see if he gets down there and then see if he can get back away from Rusty. Meanwhile, further back in the field, in 11th now, is Dale Earnhardt in number th uh, three. He's running 11th on the field. So this is the guy that is the master of psychological war warfare. Uh, listen to this assessment of the runner-up chances for the Winston Cup title this year. Well, they're just in a win-win situation. They got to go go for it. If they if they you know try to take it easy and just finish good. That ain't going to gain them anything. They got to go out and try to win races. So we're going to go out there and run hard, try to win the race too. So it's, it's still a race. You got to race hard. And uh, I'm glad to see them three cars up top every week. It's been, you know, since Bristol and Darlington, we all been up front racing. So I hope it comes down to like that every, for every race from here on to the end of the season. <laughs> it's nice you say that when you got a 300 point lead. Yeah, you don't right. like seeing those other, other guys around you. but. I tell you what, nobody's told Mark Martin yet he's out of this thing. Eight races are left in the season. Earnhardt has won five times here at Richmond over the years, and now you're riding again. Live pictures from Mark Martin's car. Boy, what a great job they doing that wall up in turn uh, four here at this Richmond track. I always used the body. You'd see them run right down on it, and you knew that sooner or later somebody would pinch somebody into it, and they'd have a whale of a wreck. They've done a good job in fixing that. Here's Martin staying in front. Walter and Elliott still in this race now is following a pattern. Stabilized right there with this number six out in front. And the story of the race is Wallace in the number two who continues to clamber up, taking a little back on every lap. By the way, Rick Wilson, all battered and tattered, car number 44, is going to come back on the track many laps down in the STP car for Richard Petty. But it is soundly crash just coming out it's been in what 50 60 laps there's the 11 Elliot staying third Ken Hill with 11 car let's go down to pitch with Dr. Dick Berger the editor of Stock Car Magazine he's got us an update on this 11. Oh I love that throw Neil on it I'm with Mike Beam Mike what have you got for Daryl Waltrip and the six to Mark Martin 
Well, the car's got a little tight right now, but you know, Dick, we come a long way in a couple of weeks, and uh, I think we kind of know what we've done wrong tonight. You know, we'll just ride out here and hopefully have a good night, but we're going to keep working. You know, this is a new car at Darlington, and Tuesday morning we cut the front frame section out from under, so we really brought a new car up here in the front wheel, so I think we'll be okay. Boy, Billy, it's hot. Look out. Randy Pepperton. Barry Johnson standing here. Barry, you're certainly one of the best two or three out there. Do you have anything for Mark right now when Rusty's coming? He's a man, you know. Uh, you have to take care of your brakes up here. And our Western Auto Chevy's running good. It can run a little faster, but we're just past halfway. Mark's going to be awful tough to beat, you know. Certainly, we're going to try to be the guys to do it. But uh, we're happy. It's a big turnaround for us, and we felt like it was coming time. Barry Dotson doing a good job for Darrell Waltrip. Does a good job for anybody with whom he's connected. Here's Mark Martin staying out in front. And Elliott having a very good night. You know, Elliott's only led one race this year, Neil. That was uh, in July when we were down there watching you doing your uh, aerial antics there at Talladega. Yeah, flying around here. And talk about flying there. We just heard from the pits kid talking about brakes. He said, you got to take care of your brakes. Let's follow this two car. And take a look inside this left front wheel when he goes down. He's going up this back straightaway. And watch when he stands on the brakes. I want you to take a look inside this wheel right here at the brake rotor. See that thing turn cherry red inside there? They're using these brakes so much on this racetrack at that high speed, 140, 50 miles an hour, stand on the brakes. And that was just like when they were telling Mark Martin to save our stuff. You got to have a good motor, but you also got to be able to stop that car and make it turn right in the middle of that corner. And there's a lot more to going fast than a gas pedal. You got to keep the brake system on these cars. We'll see it again right here. See that the red center section just melting those brakes every corner. How long can they take that much abuse? Well, let, let me tell you what. These brake companies that work with these Western Cup cars, we're using metal pads against metal rotors, and they'll run the distance, but you can throw them away when it's over. It, it pretty well eats the rotors and the brakes up, but you can't overuse them. If you pace yourself, you got plenty. The problem is you get it so hot, they just do not make a fluid that will not boil. And when you get it that hot and boil the fluid, you're going to start backing up. On board with Mark Martin, the leader. Now it's six and three tenths of a second between Mark and Rusty. And I think the uh, pressure cooker that Rusty Wallace was trying to create that word has gone back up front, and Mark Martin has been told to get busy. That's right, Steve Mill. I'm sure they, they probably gave Rusty three seconds, and then they said, hey, now, I've, I've been in situations before, you say, well, here he comes, now let's bury him. Show him you can put him four more seconds back down, and then when you got him down, you stomp him. So, Rusty, I mean, Mark Martin's in a position now that he can break your spirit. You run him down, and he mashes his gas and drives away. On board with Derek Cope, Dale Yarborough car. Eric Cope is running 18th on the field. And now you're with uh, Bobby Hillen. Bobby Hillen is back in 23rd position. A couple of laps down, scooting down here onto the bottom of the racetrack. Working his way around here in front of the sold out capacity house at Richmond International Raceway. Great night for racing on uh, Turner Broadcasting. And we'll be back come October at Charlotte. Bring you the 500. Yeah, that was an interesting shot when we were watching Bobby Hillen. Do you see him working that steering wheel back and forth, back and forth? And when we see a picture of Mark Martin, it's like he's on a Sunday drive. This car works so good, very little movement of the steering wheel, and the guys that are chasing, they're jacking those cars all over the racetrack, trying to keep up Mark's cars like it's on a rail. Putting a lap on the pole sitter, Bobby Labonte, as we've completed 233 laps. Grains of sand dropping away here as our Raybestos aerial platform gives you the view of this great facility in Richmond, Virginia, where it's all Mark Martin right now.
you got the 14 coming down pit road, one of your front guys. Well, it was a front guy. He's 10. He's, he's doing all right. Thanks, Fred. I think he picked the pace up. He's got a bunch of key players right in front of him. He can go ahead and lap them. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> At lap 239. Anticipate pit stops under green in about three to four laps. Mark Martin to come in here, make a pit stop, and it will be teamwork that will count. Down on pit road, we'll have our cameras there for you. Look at this battle. As uh, you're watching Derek Cope, the leader right behind him, trying to put him another lap down. There goes that number six, scooting right by. Mark Martin, you're on board with the leader. As he comes down the main straightaway. Mark Martin, a lot of folks at home want to know how close is what we see on television. Oh, wait a minute. Let's just hang in here a minute. Rusty Wallace is on pit road. Wallace is in. Let's go to Dick Bergman. Ken, this was a planned pit stop. They had slowed down a full second a lap from when they had new tires on the car. It's about 110 laps since the last pit stop. Four tire change under the green flag. Billy Wilburn working that left front tire really hard now. All these guys are in an exercise program. Wow, what a pit stop. Blazing pit stop on car number two. That's Strickland coming in. We get it, we're getting a time right now. And now car number six, 19.4. On the lead on that uh, Rusty Wallace car, and now the leader is coming in. You're riding with Mark Martin as he eases down at 45 miles an hour. Speed limit on pit road. Let's go down to Randy with car six. Well, Steve Neal's crew all over, and I think they're going to try and take it easy. He had a nice lead. Mark was running comfortably out there. The left side tires are being loosened up. Right sides are on. Jack is down on the right-hand side. Second can of gas already in. Crew looking very smooth here. They're going to move the right front tire that was taken off away so Mark can get away clear. The car is down and away. Mark's gone. 20.6, a nice smooth pitch stop. Kyle Petty's in up pit road. Most of the leaders are coming in. Wally Dollenbach is in. Waltrip has stayed out in the 17. Schrader is now coming on to pit road. He had picked himself up to fourth. Waltrip leading. Elliott's in second. Those two cars have been running second and third. There's Schrader in. Right side rubber on that one. Yeah, the guys that are leading along the middle are two of the guys that are notorious for gas mileage, so they stay out the wrong guy. Schrader getting good service right here with his car. Jeff Ford. Following DW. Let's go back to Randy Pemberton as we wait for car 17 to make this critical pit stop. Harry Dotson and his crew wait for Darrell's arrival. Of course, this is one of the teams that has practiced their pit stops over the air. He's just ahead of Jeff Gordon on pit road. They're going to the right side. Gordon pulls away. Dick Trickle also behind him. They're done with the right-hand side tires right now. Going around the left-hand side. This crew's flying. It looks like a pretty good stop. He wants to try and make up some ground on Mark Martin on pit road. They've been desperately working on their pit stops. He's down and away. Great pit stop. 17-9. Oh. Yeah, that's a tremendous stop. The guys must have been working on it to get him out. That's a Rusty Wallace type stop. Ah, uh, look at this. Here's that second place car and Derek Cope coming in as well. You see Elliott on the outside. Derek Cope right there with him as they come down. And let's watch Elliott stop. Junior Johnson team ready to go to work. Here's Dick Bergman. Elliott has soldiered his way to the front all day. He started way back in 26. Hardly anybody even noticed that he was here. But here he is.
Rutgers now on pit road, coming out of the lead. The brake rotors on the front of this car are glowing absolutely cherry red. They are using the brakes for all their worth here at Richmond Speedway. Four tire change, as has been the case for everybody, and Elliott is gone. And a good stop by that crew, as you would expect. And right with them comes that Derek Crook. Hope group and take a look at 25 and look what's hanging off the back of it up there on the top of the window right in the left rear window they were working on the wedge just in the chassis some and they left the ratchet and the extension down in there nascar black flag them. i think flies out goes through a windshield it'll hurt somebody so they're going to be a stop and go they'll stop they'll snatch that ratchet out of there and he'll be gone and boy is that costly that speed limit on pit road really cost you some distance so back comes ken schrader costly error after that pit stop under green for the Schrader crew as they settle down and get back with the program. For the moment, Labonte has the lead. That's Bobby Labonte, the kid that sat on the pole, former Grand National champion, runner-up a year ago in Grand National, and currently one of the leading rookie candidates. He should be coming in shortly, staying out for the moment. Martin stays second. Jim, here's the key right here. Look at this thing. This is going to be shake out and be the lead in just a minute. The two is right there with the six car. And after these pit stops, this is going to be the battle for the lead. Michael Waltrip is being shown fourth. Darrell fifth. Elliott sixth. And Dale, Dale Jarrett just behind it. Now they're bringing his number down. Well, Rusty tried to get around him just a minute ago. They both had tremendous pit stops. And I'm telling you, this is going to shake out and be the battle for the lead. And the full set of stops is over. Bobby Labonte has yet to make his pit stop. Therefore, he relegates Martin and Wallace, six and two respectively, into a battle for second place. Labonte came around again. He's going to stay out a little longer. But he's, you know, he's running, like they said, a second off the pace. Older tires are a second slower. Even though he's leading the race, he's given a valuable distance on that track. We haven't had these guys paired yet. You know, one time, Rusty was leading, the six hadn't got there yet. This is really the first chance we've had to put them back to back and bumper to bumper to see who can fight it out for the lead. Neil, how do you feel when you're sitting there on pit road? It's a green flag stop. You've got a good crew, but you know that a second counts for so much in this form of racing. Again, people won't believe how busy you are when you pit. We sit here and watch him come in, they jack the car. Well, the driver comes in, he's got a specific spot. He parks the car on the He gets the car in neutral. Puts the clutch in, he's got his foot on the brake, and the toe of his foot on the throttle, is his heel on the brake, he's getting in first gear. His cue when they drop that jack is to leave. So even though it seems like a long time, the driver's pretty busy, the only time you notice a difference is when they have a problem and you sit there for a long time. But it's awful tricky to sit there and watch those guys just drive away from you when you're sitting on the jack. Give you all Yeah, and you know, you know the guys are doing the best they can out there. They're doing everything they can in those pits to get you out. And just they, sometimes they hit a perfect stop and sometimes it's a problem. The key is just to get consistent stops, and that's what Rusty and the six car are doing. In the battle for second spot, Gant going on another lap down. He's running back in 15th spot, and they're about to close up on Jeff Purvis. Waiting for this confrontation to really get nailed down between these two guys who at the moment stay in second spot to Bobby Labonte out in front and still the body has yet to come in they're still showing him as the leader and there he is and there you see jeff purvis in the four and he may be getting ready to come in here come the leaders by him He's trying to find a hole bobby labani is trying Whoa. to get in just just as the two went under he came over like something boy they almost had wrecked in the corner and we saw one there a moment ago we saw Wallace earlier just throw that car in turn four. He had twisted it sideways. Dick Bergen waiting on young Bobby Labonte. This crew has been waiting on Bobby Labonte, new Ken Squire. They have been on the edge of the seat on pit road waiting for Labonte to come in. Labonte now in. What a crop of rookies this year. This kid has shown everybody a lot in the last several weeks. Tim Brewer, the crew chief, on the left front. He's been with lots of winning teams, and he is soldiering these guys forward today. A lot more than a poll being shown by this young team this afternoon, this evening. 22.7 for their pit stop. Not a great one, but they got it done. First poll for a rookie this year was pulled by Bobby Labonte for this race, if you're just joining us. We're now at lap 260 of 400 to be run. As Bobby comes back into the race, we've got a squabble up in front. It's the one we've been waiting for. 
Here's the Ford, number six, Mark Martin, and the Pontiac of Rusty Wallace squaring off for another round. And that little bit of hesitation getting into pits gave Mark Martin a little bit of breathing room, and he got away from Rusty, but now the six is in some traffic, so Rusty's got the chance to close in again. There's Hensley down low in the seven, Jeff Purvis in the Morgan McClure car. Now further back, there you see Rick Maston right behind him. It's the five. Rick Mast is in seven. Ricky Rudd in that five car is in eight. Gordon, number 24, in ninth. Back and riding again with Mark Martin as he tries to get around Jeff Purvis. How close is what we watch on television to what you see behind the wheel, Mark Martin? It's, uh, it's a lot better than nothing, but it's still a lot different when you're getting all the sensations in the seat. What are the sensations we're missing? The slide of the car. You know, the, the G-force is the slide of the car. Are you all the time sliding in the corners? My car is. Okay, people, let me tell you what. When I tell you to lean to the right, as he goes in this corner, I'll show you what it feels like. <laughs> It's just a matter of what Mark's talking about. You pull so many G's in the corner. See that head brace up there on the side of his helmet where it says power roll. Right there it goes in and his helmet is actually flexing that piece of uh, aluminum over. He's pressed in that right seat. The car is actually squirming around under it. He'll go in and put the car in the place he wants it and it'll slide over about a foot. So you just never lap calculate on how much slippage there is on those wheels. And when he says that, I mean the car does not track in the lines you put it. It's always trying to slip out from under you. And it always looks so solid when you see these pictures. Well, because the guys know how to slip it and not let the thing get out from under them. It's kind of controlled drift all the time. Battle continuing. Ford versus Pontiac. Mark Martin going for five in a row. Can he do it? We'll see. going to sound bad when his pick crew was running about 10th before he <laughs> 271 laps complete of 400 in the Miller Genuine Draft 400 coming to you live on TBS from Richmond International Raceway and look who's in front car two like a black panther it was couching ready to pounce and look at this move there's Purvis up on the outside in the four car. He comes in there, and the two cars kind of boxed in behind Purvis. Right here, the six and the two are racing for the lead. Now watch Rusty. He gets a good run up off this corner, 
He's going to follow the four down the back straightaway. Got him boxed in, but watch this get out of the box. Now he's going to go under this carpet. This pass is not over. He comes in behind the 30, then he moved right outside and took the lead. Nice piece of driving has put Rusty Wallace in a place to win his third Miller 400 here at Richmond International Raceway. He, for the moment, is the leader. Mark Martin has fallen to second spot. Incidentally, Bobby Labonte, who led for some time as they came in in that green flag pit situation, he went from first back to 16th. Ten cars remain in the lead lap. So now the situation is Wallace in front. And Martin in second. Take a look at the race story here. Ernie Urban got out to the lead. Then it was Bobby Labonte. Rusty Wallace had an early shot at uh, commanding the race. We had our first caution at lap number 59. Uh, that was when the 28 blew up. Ernie Urban. Wallace has been up there. The caution at lap 82. That was when the 12 car crashed. The auto light race story showing you Waltrip getting a chance at it. Then Martin dominating for a while out there. Third caution of the day came at lap 133. We had a two car jam session. Rick Wilson beaten up and uh, Todd Bodine's car up here in turn three. There you see the uh, 26 to 42 as you're watching this auto like breakdown on the event, giving you an idea of how it's come to pass. We're at lap 277 now, and the last 10 laps have been that car number two. And there's a great story in, in this number two. They uh, they called him uh, for doing a little short breaking out there on the start. That was the NASCAR call. They brought him in, penalized him, put him on the tail end of the field. He was about 25 car lengths from getting lapped, circulated around, fought his way through. And there's Rick Wilson snubbed up that 44 considerably. Kenny, we, we've got Randy Pemberton down in the pits, the two pits. Let's see what they think about what's been happening. Well, I can tell you guys, you talk about 25 car legs from being lapped by Rusty. Look who's about 12 car legs from getting lapped by Rusty. It's Dale Earnhardt. Buddy Parrott, uh, Rusty Wallace's crew chief came over and said, go get him. Put him a lap down. They're talking championship points here, guys. If they, uh, Earnhardt's running 10th, He's on the lead lap, but all the way through 17th, from 11th to 17th, those cars are one lap down. They want to put him in that group. It's all a bunch of points, man. He's racing to win, but he's also racing for that championship. Remember that Earnhardt leads in the points by uh, at 304. It's Rusty Wallace in second, and Mark Martin very close, just three points behind him in third, followed by Dale Jarrett and Morgan Shepard in the top five, then Kyle Petty, Schrader, Irvin, Jeff Bodine and Jeff Gordon rounding out the top 10. So Earnhardt working on him pretty hard now to get him a lap down. Yeah, if they can get him a lap down in the caution, right now if the caution comes out, Earnhardt is almost assured of being in 10th because he's the last guy on the lead lap. If they get him this lap down, the caution comes out, he's got six more cars he's got to fight all night long to hold that position. So it's critical for Rusty to get up there and do that. Oh, look at this skirmish. There's the five car down to the bottom underneath the 26. Fighting for fifth. Ricky Rudd is there. Brent Bodine on the outside. At 282, this struggle going on. See Rudd trying his best to get up around that 26 car, but you get two cars evenly matched like this, it's hard to make that pass raced hard all night long together. Every time we look up, these two cars are together. Look at Jeff Gordon right there in seven. Kyle Petty's right behind him in eight. We saw Petty earlier in the night right up front in second place. Looked like he had something for the leaders. And things have changed around a little bit. He's on the a little bit. Kyle Petty's in eighth. The ninth car is Terry Labonte, the Kellogg's car. And then in 10th is Earnhardt, and he is the last car in that lead lap. Not only is Rusty trying to run Earnhardt down, he's put about a quarter of straightaway on the sixth car, which really surprises me. There you see Earnhardt. Got Ken Schrader in between the two car. And while this is going on, while Rusty's making this charge to get Earnhardt down, boy, well, I tell you, he's really pulling away from the sixth car. Trader back in 17th position getting lapped by 
and Rusty Wallace, defending champion, goes down a lap. Ooh. Wallace having a little trouble getting through there. Schrader making a good move. Yeah, we just got a call from the pits on Rusty's radio. They say they just got a bad set of tires. It's the ah. slowest he's run all night. And look at this struggle continue. There you see Rudd in the five, and Brett Bodine at it again, and give fifth place back to Ricky Rudd. Ricky Rudd back around Brett Bodine, and Jeff Gordon looks him over. Remember, Jeff Gordon is tenth in the standings at the present time. Struggle for fifth place. It's a four-way deal. First, but a report, Neil Bonnet passing on. But he's got a bad well, set of tires. That was Mark Martin. They said Mark Martin's got a bad uh, Mark, set of tires. Mark Martin's got a bad set of tires. And he's dropping off the pace a little bit. They're on board with Mark Martin. You know, it's a bad time to have that happen. Trying to win that fifth in a row. Remember when Gant Neal was going, he won four in a row, was going five, and he was, what, about, he was less than ten laps from five in a row back in 91 when he, when he lost his brakes. And Earnhardt passed him for the win. What was North Wilkesboro, was it? Yeah, it was North Wilkesboro. But let me tell you, they were so good with that Camper Grand deal, he almost won the race anyway with no brakes. He led it for a long time without brakes. And then he ended up running the all the time on one race. So you get an edge, and you've got something on these I, I couldn't believe how well Gant drove that race. I sat home and watched it on the TV, and it was incredible because you knew he'd run out of brakes. They were reporting that, and he, he just Can't never missed the race. a lick. Never, never missed a beat. Nope. Just as long as nobody stops in front of you, all right. But that's a terrible feeling right along and nothing on that, on that panel. But you see that, remember that's how they said Petty became the great driver that he was is because in the old days, didn't have the kind of braking systems you had now, and you're always out of brakes. He Ooh, I couldn't have stood a whole lot of that. <laughs> I always liked to be there, but I needed it or not. So Wallace is first, Martin is second, and Martin is backing up because he has a set of tires that haven't matched up. We'll take a quick commercial break and be back with you once again. The World Shamu up there, keeping an eye on this one at Richmond International Raceway. I'm hearing uh, natural sound, that's all. Yeah, I, I came back and redid that. Huh? No, I'm hearing natural sound. I'm hearing, I'm hearing microphone. I hear me and I hear track sound. That's huh? No. I don't know if they're hearing me or not. I don't think I, I'm not hearing anything back. I'm hearing me here. I'm hearing nothing else. Rick, can you hear me? Yes. Who's that? This is Neil. Fred. Hey, Neil. Yeah, Rick I can, can hear, hear me. Do you hear me? This is Ken. Do you hear me, Rick? Promotional fees and considerations have been paid by the following. Phillips 66 Trop Arctic Motor Oil, the high quality motor oil for year round engine protection. Long live your car with Phillips 66 Trop Arctic. And by Ray Bestus, the best in brakes. And by Cellular One. 
Cellular One reaches clear across America. Just think how clear it'll sound across the street. And by the U.S. Air Force Reserve. For most people in the world, the intense power of the F-16 is thousands of feet above. For you, it's a phone call away. The Air Force Reserve, a great way to serve. laps will be complete this time by that means there's just 75 miles to go 100 laps to finish it and here at Richmond International Raceway TBS pleased to bring you the Miller 400 tonight you're watching live as Rusty Wallace is now leading Mark Martin Martin had built up a lead that seemed insurmountable he seemed bulletproof but for the moment the interval between Martin in second place and this man Rusty Wallace stands at three and three tenths of a second. Oh, we got a spinner in turn number two. One car all the way around at Sterling Marlin. He's trying to gather it back up. Caution is out. He's still trying to get it fired. Everybody getting around it. Racing back to the line comes Rusty Wallace, the leader. Earnhardt has not gone a lap down. Wallace was trying desperately to do that to him. It didn't happen. I tell you who's looking for this caution is Rusty, excuse me, is the sixth Martin. car, Mark Martin. I made the call wrong earlier. Martin is the one that said he needed different tires. Let's take a look and replay at what happened out here in turn two. There we see the eight car, Sterling Marlin there. Oh, the 26 is coming up there. It gets together. 26 tapped him in the rear just a little bit. These two guys were able to go around. The eight backs up right up almost in the groove. We see there goes Labonte by oh, watch Kyle it. Petty. And he is in the groove. They're coming either side of him now. He's all the way up there. Boy, it got scary because he stayed out there for a while. Now Sterling Marlin, that won't bother him. He'll just fire it up and get back in here. Flat spotted some tires. There's the leader in. Let's go to Dick Burkett. Rusty Wallace team really didn't want this pit stop, Ken Squire. The car was running absolutely perfectly. Rusty Wallace radioed back, don't change anything. Give me the same tires that I have got. We have been also listening to Roger Penske, who has been telling him, run down low, go get him. You know who him is. <laughs> Randy. Mark Martin is in on the left-hand side. There was reports they're going to go with about one and a half rounds of wedge out. Mark had a little bit of a push. They probably adjusted a little air pressure. There's maybe not. I never saw a red wedge wrench go in at all, so I did not see any wedge taken out of that car. I'm not believing this. They changed four tires on the Rusty Wallace car and put him out in 16 seconds. 16.6. That's about as quick as you'll ever see. Wow, those cars go. 17. Oh, yeah. Really slow to get in. But, uh, you know, 19 seconds used to be the gauge. 16 is unbelievable. The rest of the field coming in. We're under caution. They have the uh, Sterling Marlin car fired. We'll be getting ready to run again in just a few moments. Stay with us. Yeah. We still have that uh, that brake rotor with Morgan, Morgan Shepard. He's back on the track. You want to do something with that in a little bit? Walker must have had a heck of a stop. Yeah. Got to hit the sixth car. Go ahead and do this. Yeah. I believe they're going to give one to go this time around. They are going to, I think. Yes. Yeah, they're going one level. Just give signal. Coming 
around to restart the race at lap 307. Wallace is first, Waltrip second, Elliott third, Martin fourth, Ricky Rudd fifth, Gordon is sixth, Kyle Petty seventh, it's Brett Bodine in eighth, Earnhardt is ninth, Terry Labonte is in tenth. One lap down in eleventh is Gant, twelfth is Bobby Labonte, Rick Mast is thirteenth, Schrader is fourteenth, two laps down, Strickland in fifteenth as they take three. Another good pit stop by the Walton crew. A brilliant pit stop by the Penske working by the Inside on the restart, so some of those guys be coming in. Wallace has led 110, 22 and 108 laps so far. That's a 22 and the 110. They caught both of those guys. Labonte had a good run going, and they passed on the inside. They're gonna bring him in. Gant, that lap car in the 11th spot, down on the bottom, trying to fight his way back into the stand. Mark Mark on board the fourth place car down the main chute. What's going to be interesting with this to see if this set of tires works as well as all of his other ones had. Last set cost him two distance. Derek Cope in heavy traffic now. Martin has led 154 laps tonight. Derek Cope with Bobby Hillen up on the outside. Up the front of his car as he's up on that outside line. Side by side, second place. It's Elliott on the outside. Waltrip down low. Here comes Martin into it. Back straight away. On board with Mark Martin as he looks over at Bill Elliott. Martin now third. Closing in on Bill Elliott second. Pontiac first. Fords running second and third. Chevrolet Waltrip back to fourth. Earnhardt in turn two. Trouble as he came out of there and started down the back straightaway. And he's coming down on the pit road. That's the one. That's the one Correction coming down pit Rick road. Mast. Rick Mast in one car comes on the pit road. Yeah, the 22 honored the black flag. He came in and he's been back out. Mast in car number one, in and out of that stop and go. Earnhardt is okay. Continuing out there. Intense spot in the lead lap, holding on. Look at this struggle for second position. Elliott there, Martin trying to take it away. And while this is going on, Rusty Wallace has got clear sailing out front. He's getting a little bit of distance on these guys while they're doing this running. You see Martin close it down, getting in that corner. Randy Pemberton is in the uh, Mark Martin pits. Let's get a report. Steve Neal had a bad set of tires last time. Did you make any other adjustments, or can you catch Rusty? Oh, we changed the tire pressure around. These radial tires react to that real good. Right now, we got to get by the 11. There's a bunch of good cars behind us. Rusty's real stout. He's got clear track. He's probably got an advantage right now. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, good luck. Dick Bergman? Well, Buddy Kurt, how do you play it from here? Well, uh, I just hope this thing goes green. we got a good car on long run, so... I just hope we don't have to go another one of those Greg, Greg Wallace just did. Time just at a 16.68 that last pit stop. And I hope we don't have to do that to him one more time. I would like to say uh, that uh, I'd like to wish uh, my uh, mother-in-law and father-in-law a happy anniversary. Look at this fight. Second spot. There you see that 11 with Bill Elliott. And right with him comes Martin again in this struggle for second position. You're riding with Mark Martin as he tries to take a spot away from Bill Elliott, a 39-time Winston Cup winner. Well, this is a good run for Elliott. Just in front of him, you see Bobby Labonte's number 22. Remember, he was up on the pole. He's back in 13th lap down from the leaders. Yeah, that deal, they just black flagged him and it cost him. He came in, he came right back out. There's Junior Johnson watching Elliott. Best run they've had in a long time. Will that string be broken tonight? Number six, Martin, who just joined us, has won four Winston Cup races in a row. Here's a battle between fourth and fifth. 
Waltrip has it for the moment. Rudd in the number five. Down on the bottom trying to take it away. In all, the last seven races, three Grand National and four Winston Cup events that Mark Martin has participated in, he's come home the winner. But in Winston Cup racing, nobody since 1971 has won five in a row. And that's what Martin is attempting to do tonight. But to convert second place into victory looks like a toughie now with 320 laps complete, 80 to go. And Rusty Wallace, who came from almost a lap down, made it up. And he's scratching, biting, fighting his way around turn number four out in front. Has himself an advantage of about 12 car lengths. Yeah, this right here with the six car battling with Bill Elliott. Both of these guys are running each other really hard, and Rusty just sitting out there cruising away. So it's gonna, if he gets much distance on, it's gonna be hard for him to make it up. 321 complete. This is the battle for the moment. It continues between Bill Elliott and Mark Martin as Rusty Wallace continues on his way toward a third victory here. We'll see. I'm, I'm here. I hear you. We're fine. We're ready to go. We have the brake rotor deal here, too, if you want to take time for that. Okay. Only about 70 laps to go on a Saturday night at Richmond International Raceway and Rusty Wallace trying to make it two straight here at Richmond in the Miller Genuine Draft 400. Wallace has had to fight hard all evening. Mark Martin had a dominant car earlier, but Wallace has been setting the pace here the last many laps and it looks like he may have this one, well, not quite in the bag yet, but getting close to that point. Our upcoming event as we check the Sears Craftsman race schedule for you tonight at the SDP Pit Center on TBS will be in Charlotte the weekend of October 9th and 10th. Winston Cup action on Sunday. The Mellow Yellow 500. Hope you can join us at 1 o'clock in the afternoon from the Charlotte Motor Speedway. We'll be here live on TBS. Want to show you something. You don't think these race cars hit the wall hard. This is a brake rotor that was on the Morgan Shepard car. Remember the first caution tonight much earlier? Shepard popped the wall in the second corner. This isn't what caused it. This is the result from it. This is a steel brake rotor. This is the aluminum hub. The brake rotor chunked badly when, Mo when Morgan hit the wall. It took him a long time. They fixed the car. He's back on the racetrack, but that's a $100 piece that was trashed in that crash, gentlemen. Boy, I'd like to buy me one of those for 100 I got I to start buying for Rick, uh, Rick Benjamin. That's a good, good price for that thing. And look, coming here, looks like Earnhardt has picked it up just a little bit. He got around Walker. He was 10th a while ago. He's up to seventh place, so he's starting to move up a little bit. See the leaders checking out up there. How much can you buy those rotors for these days? 
Uh, the rotor's about 100 and a hat's about 50, the aluminum hat or 75. So, but I mean, after a race like this, it's pretty well used up. Uh, kind of like throwaways. You can put a regular brake pad on them, and they won't stop good. You put a metal pad, it stops good, but it wears the rotor out in a hurry. Earnhardt's the man on the move for the moment. Finds himself in seventh. I'll tell you, the guy that's backed up has been Walton. Darrell is back into ninth in that car 17. Ken, I almost question. You know, he came in way back, and he came out in second place. I'm not sure they might have tried a two-tire stop. I didn't see the stop, but they really moved up, and it looks like he's falling off, so something happened. See Brett Bodine right there in 10th. Trying to get by him right now. Jimmy Means down on the inside. No sponsorship on the Means car. Find something soon. Here's Waltrip in the 17. Brett Bodine coming after him. Schrader running a lap down. Actually, two laps down is in 14. And here comes Brett Bodine again to the inside in that Quaker State car. Works it down to the bottom and closes in on Daryl Waltrip. Battle for ninth. Still out in front. Elliott second. Martin third. For the moment, this is the battle. 325 laps complete. My correction, 335 laps complete. There's Walker. Still having a little trouble. He's back through. He's either got a mismatched set of tires or he went for two because something's really dropped him off. Let's go back up front. Here's Dick Bergen. Interesting story on the lead car, Ken Squire. They're calling it a brand new race car. In most ways, it really is. It's got a new front clip, new body, new back end. This is the first race that's run like that. But the very center of the car, the roll cage, that was the very first roll cage they ever built when Roger Penske came to win some cup racing with Rusty Wallace. That roll cage with a front clip and back clip had all sat in the shop for a long while. Years. They were going to restore it, make a museum piece out of it. Rush it in. Ah, that's kind of nice. Let's make a race car out of it. Well, I bet he likes that roll cage even better now because they are pulling away from second place. Some museum piece. Look at this battle for second spot. Martin is there. A couple of fours whipping on each other here. They're two and three cents of a second down. 2.3 away from the leader. Rusty's got a mirror in his roll cage. He's glad to see this right here. The more these guys race back here, the further he's going to get away from them. They're going to have one of them going to make a quick pass and get back in line and go. The rest is going to stretch it out even more. Martin tried to square that first turn, and you saw that car take an extra bite to get around there, and that gave the advantage back for a moment to Elliott. Right back comes Martin again on the bottom side. See Martin working hard on the inside. Earlier in the race, this car was capable of just passing anyone. Like now, he really drove the car down hard in the corner. Right. And you're dead on. It was two and three tenths of a second between the first and these two squared off for second. Now it's down to two point, back to 2.7. Not yeah. down, but back. Yeah, Ken, they're losing almost a half a second a lap. Not running each other hard here, but I mean, they're racing for second place. First thing you got to do is beat this guy, then worry about the next one. So for the moment, Elliott has that position back. He's the second, Martin the third, Russ the fourth. We're talking about Daryl Waltrip and his trials and tribulations. Let's find out what the story is on car 17. Dick Bergren. Well, guys, we're oh, here on the Mark Martin pit. You can see behind me this. This crew member is adjusting the tire pressure in Mark's cars. This was the problem with Daryl Walter. They were trying to adjust his tire pressure to get so he could run with Rusty and run with Mark. Now, Mark's having a little problem with his pressure. They're going to change it. The, the problem with Daryl's was he put the pressure up, or the crew did, a little bit too high on the right side, and they're just having a wicked uh, dickens of a time with it right now. So a little tire pressure problem for them. They do everything with tire pressure now because they, they can't change springs, and uh, it's very difficult to, to adjust these cars with wedge now to a lot with tire pressures with these Goodyear tires. Hold the phone, Randy. Here comes Ricky Rudd. Rudd up to third. Martin falls to fourth. Ricky Rudd has gathered it up. And the lad from Chesapeake, Virginia. This is his hometown track. He's going for it right now. They ran those cars that hard the sixth 
the 11. They really abused him. Here comes Rudd. He's going to take advantage of that. He jumped on him. Got around the six, and he's going after 11. Rudd in third place. 345 laps are complete. Wallace first. Elliott second. Rudd now third. It's Martin in fourth. Gordon in fifth. Earnhardt in sixth. Terry Labonte in seventh. Kyle Petty in eighth. Brett Bodine in ninth. And Darrell Walter on the tail end of the lead lap. Can we keep here talking about tire pressure, tire pressure? What that tire pressure does is actually change the spring rate, the sidewall of the tire. They use that for spring, the softness or the hardness of the air pressure. Let's that tire work as a spring, and they're playing on the ground with it a lot. You either hit on it or, boy, you're out in left field, and some guys are backing up. Well, definitely not backing up, but here he comes after Bill Elliott. Four second spot, and the advantage in favor of Wallace is better than three and a half seconds now. All this skirmish back here in second spot that we saw between 11 and 6, now 11 and 5, taking its toll on trying to collect that leader, Rusty Wallace. Now this is what Rusty and his crew are saying, no cautions, no cautions. They'd like to see this thing go green. No cautions change the whole complexion of this thing. June, we saw Ricky Rutt victorious at Michigan. And now he's beginning to show some strength and he's got time to do it. There'll be 50 laps remaining in just a couple. Rusty Wallace is very into his own chassis on that car, too. Listen to this. I've, I'm really major big time into the chassis. That's been something I did my whole life. I feel like if you're going to be a consistent driver, not a driver, it hits good, it hits one week and then runs crappy for three or four weeks after that. You gotta be a driver that can, can set the cars up and understand the chassis completely so you be so you can be a consistent driver. And I really love working with the chassis part of it. Ken, I can't help but think that goes back to those ASA days, those little short tracks running around all over the country when you didn't have the luxury of having 40 mechanics fixing your car. Rusty built his own cars and fixed them. Take a look at what we're fixing to see right here. The car five, Ricky Rudd, comes to the inside on Bill Elliott. Chevy on the bottom, Ford on the outside, as you watch it live here on TBS from Richmond International Raceway. Slugfest for second spot, makes the midway. Over 150 miles an hour, they carry that speed into turn one. And up on the lap car of Derek Cope. Bill Elliott, oh, he just taps the back end of 98. Look out. Hard hit. Caution is out for the Bojangles car took a shot coming off number two and you saw the result. Caution is down. That's the fourth time tonight that yellow has flown. Take that back. That's the fifth time tonight that we've seen the yellow out. You saw that one happen. He's talking about fixed emotions. Rusty says, oh no, Mark Martin and Rusty guys say, man, do we need this. We'll see what happens when they get out of these pit stops. Lap 352 is what had happened. What happened? This is what happened. They go down in the corner here. Rudd was racing with 11 car. He's trying to get up there with Elliott. Gets in the throttle. Wham! Right at the back end of Derek Cope. And around he goes. Around for a ride. Ooh. Leaders on pit road. Wallace is in. Elliott, Rudd, Martin, Gordon, Earnhardt. All the leaders in. They all said they didn't want to have to left. put that 16 second one on again. Let's see if they can do it right here. They just said a while ago, we hate to have to show up when we do it again. If they do it again, they'll be leading this race. Tell us again how much those tires cost every time you change four. They're about uh, $1,200 a set. Looks like Mark Martin's having some trouble with his left front. Randy's there. Well, uh, they are having a little trouble with the left front. They went up two pounds all the way around, or at least on the right side. Steve Neal, three rounds of wedge out of the car. They're going to try and loosen oh, this thing up. Let Mark Martin Bad crash, it. and uh -oh. it's Ricky Rudd getting spun. He got hit coming out of the pits. Like Rudd and Earnhardt got together as they came out of pit road. Gathers it up and continues. That stop while ago, Rusty Wallace was 17.6. Before it was 16.6, so still at that, it's a tremendous stop. Sandy right the left rear. See, the thing really got thing. Let's take another look. Okay, here's Elliott leaving the pits. Here comes Rudd out. Here comes Earnhardt out. Boy, the hit right there at the end of pit road. Rudd goes around, Earnhardt goes on out. 
It's dinged just behind the driver's door. Rudd coming around to get back in again. Okay, there's Earnhardt up there beside Rusty Wallace. I'm sure he's asking Rusty, take a look at that right front. Let me know what that thing looks like. Earnhardt got hit on the right front that when he made that contact. And somebody like Rusty, he'll look over and say, hey, you need to go in the pits and get that thing fixed or you're okay. Not much of a birthday present for Ricky Rudd. He's going to 37 tomorrow. And there you see the damage on Ricky Rudd's car number five just back there in that lower panel behind the door. He wiggled that car real hard, Ken. What he's wanting to see if it sets down. It looked to me as though when he wiggled it, that quarter panel set down on the top of that tire. If that's the case, that thing will wear the top of the tire, wear a hole in it. He's not careful. They got to make the choice. Do we come in and correct that problem or see if we can live with it? He's doing that where the crew can take a look as he goes down, see if it bottoms out on that tire. Crew looking on to see if they should bring him in or not. How about that three car? Did that take any damage? Took a pretty good lick on the right front. Might have done the toe down, toe in, or toe out damage on it. I think he may fit. Wrong. Staying out there. Let's take a look at the right front on Earnhardt. So we can see that's the area that hit on his car. Looks like most of the lick was on the tire itself. No, just right up there. Right in front of the fender a little yep. bit. The question is the toe out. Is it at all? Take a look like it on the steering components. Looks like maybe both of them just have body damage. The spotters on top of the pit road, they're looking at the TV. They want to see yourself if that right front's broken. Yeah, that's right. They're saying, don't, we don't want to see ourselves. We want to see that race car. Get that thing out of there. I'm sure the crews are hollering. Put the camera back on the right front so we can see what we got. Well, this is happening in lap 356. We're under caution. Rudd collected Derek Cope. Send him spinning out of turn number two. Brought out the fifth caution. Let's go to Randy Pember. As soon as he comes to here. Well, Richard Childress, Andy Petrie, all the guys, they're watching the monitor. They'll make a nice tight shot of the right front if you could. We've done it for other teams before. It's television. They're trying to figure out if that right front is rubbing. It was difficult. They're saying it's close. They, uh, it's like a huddle. They said break. We'll take a look. I think they're going to let him go. They're going to leave it like it is. I tell you what, you rely just like when he pulled up to Rusty and was asking him, was that right front rubbing? Looks like they decided to go with it. Rudd could have questioned on the left rear his, so both of them are going to take the chance and see if they can go. This late in the race, you got a gamble, I guess. Watching that uh, wireless motor on television down there, getting that shot. Most folks are getting a good look at what that number three looked like. I guess they're going to leave him out. Indeed, Neil, that seems to be the story as they get organized. Pace car is coming in at lap 358. We go green. Down for a start. On the break, Wallace first, Elliott second, Earnhardt third, Gordon fourth. Martin is fifth, Kyle Petty sixth, Brett Bodine seventh, Waltrip eighth, Terry Labonte in ninth, Ricky Rudd out there. Top ten. Wallace trying to get away. After him comes Elliott. Elliott fades a bit high. Quick pass back in 13th down the inside. Elliott best this year. He had a third of Pocono in July. And of course, he won the last race of the 1992 season at Atlanta, take place in November. Always a good one. Oh, Elliott stayed right there with Rusty. Seems to stay right with him. Question is Martin. Martin is sandwiched back behind Hunt Strickland. The 27 car who is running 15. But here's the struggle. And it's for the lead. Bill Elliott, who has not tasted a victory since that last race of 92. Working on the back end. And now all of a sudden Jeff Gordon slows down dramatically. Gordon coming down in fifth spot. Drops all the way back through traffic onto the rear. Something he, to miss there. I think what happened, Kenny, just got shoved outside, slid out to the outside wall. So the battle continues up in front. 361 complete. We'll be back with more of it in a moment between Wallace and Elliott for the moment at Richmond. Boy, this is the best part of the race. 
Well, I'd say this thing right now is going to do what This is setting up about five yeah. laps. Hello, Neil. Yeah. Listen, I was on a meeting just talking to Junior shooting a bull before this thing started. Yeah. They walked in, and, and he couldn't drive his car at all. It was history. He wouldn't turn in the corners. Junior called Mike Beam in and said, let me tell you what I want you to do to that car. And Mike Bean said, well, I don't know about He said, do what I tell you to do that car. He did it to the car, and it's flying. Okay. You need to tell that story. Yeah, when we left, the fans saw Elliot closing. Ooh, Earnhardt, uh, Walter. rather uh, Waltrip just faded up almost off the wall. Something's happened to Walter. Ooh. for the lead. Three car struggle. Wallace first. Elliott second. Earnhardt third. Laps 368 have been completed. At Richmond International Raceway, defending champion of this event, Rusty Wallace for the moment has the lead. Bill Elliott is there knocking on the door. Darrell Waltrip has just faded back dramatically. Came up in the corner and the car just slid back. Well back. Randy? Tell us what happened there. Well, the deal was right before what you're looking at here, he got a little, he got a little into, I think it was Brett Bonine, so he got a little popped, and it was the same thing with Jeff Gordon. you got to remember, we're 30 laps from uh, the finish of this race, and these guys are going at it. That's all there is to it. So they got together a little bit. Daryl shot up the track. Wild trips are being shown in 10th spot. We're back with you live, and we're watching put a lap on Bobby Hill, and up in front. Here you see Wallace still deployed first. Elliott second and perched in third. It's Dale Earnhardt. Earnhardt is back and looking really strong. I wonder if we can get a word with Johnny Hayes. I understand he was down there just before the race when they were making final preparations on that uh, Junior Johnson car number 11. And uh, I think it's a, a remarkable story, Neil. John, are you there? Johnny Hayes? Yes, Ken, I'm here. What was the story with, with Junior just before this thing started tonight? Well, I was in business with Junior congratulating him about his new baby. All of a sudden, uh, Mike Beam walked in and he said, listen, uh, the car will not turn in the corner. Bill's not happy with it. Let me tell you what I want you to do to that car. He exactly described what he wanted to do with that car, down to the number of shims he wanted taken out, the whole thing. And Mike said, hey, we ain't want to even have a chance to practice. He said, do what I tell you. It'll loosen this car up. Proves to me Junior Johnson is still the man. Yeah, you can see how excited he's over. He's propped up, got one foot up in his hand in his pocket. Never gets too excited. Look there. It's one of the best performances they've had this year. Just a length and a half off Rusty Wallace down the back straightaway. 374 coming around for 25 to go. Three of Rusty Wallace's five 1993 wins have come on short tracks. Get in that shot window, you can see the six car, Mark Martin. We hadn't forgot about him. He's back in fourth. You see Mark, he's fourth. That's Gant in between him there. There's the two, Rusty Wallace, Bill Elliott. There's Earnhardt, and then there's Harry Gant in between them. 
Here's Mark Martin. He's got Ken in between him and Earnhardt. But he, I thought he would really be able to close in on this restart, but he's still struggling just a little bit. Not back like he was at the first of his. Fourth place is Martin. You're riding with it right there. Meanwhile, Elliott continues to put the pressure on. Leaders hustle down into turn number three. Martin's within striking distance. Bobby Hillen giving a deep shot from further back in the field. I tell you, Hillen yeah. being shown, excuse me, Neil, but he's in 24th position with these pictures. You know, like they were, Elliott really closed in on Martin earlier, and then Earnhardt got after Elliott pretty hard, lost the distance. It looks like Martin's up, and Elliott's able to come right back up on Rusty again now. He's going to make him work for it. I want you to forget, we'll be back with you at Charlotte, North Carolina, Saturday, that great Bush Grand National Competition, and Sunday, October the 10th, 500 at Charlotte. Another yellow race, always a dandy at Charlotte Motor Speedway on the mile and a half. Love that racetrack. And this Richmond track, my, how it grows. Year after year, they just keep putting the money right back into it and improving it. Had a big golf course event this week, raised thousands of dollars for charities here in Enrico County. Now tonight, as we mentioned earlier, every seat was sold out in April. The only question is how many more seats can they add for next year to take care of the people that want to be here? Yeah, they might be sold out, but nobody's using them. Everybody in the grandstands on their feet right now with Elliott and the chance to get after Rusty Wallace for the lead. Rick Mast in that number one car is a lap down. He's being shown in 12th. The battle is right here. Ricky Rudd is in six. Just in front of him is Kyle Petty. Just behind him is Brett Bodine. Ricky Rudd, who was a real factor, then got spun on pit road. After he had collected Derek Hope out of turn two. From Richmond Raceway, great aerial shots being provided by Ray Vestas. We've got a crash. Strong one in the main straightaway. Two cars locked together going down. They have pulled themselves apart and continue. I think Hillen was one, and I think Trickle was the other. With 18 laps to go, do you come in? Do you stay out? I'd hate to be that lead guy with that decision right now. Coming down the main chute, Bobby Hillen got tangled up with Dick Trickle in the car number 38, the pedigree dog food car. You talk about some corporate decisions. Those pit crews are doing some judgment calls right now. They've got just a split second here to decide whether to bring their man in or leave him out. That's the 39 car. I think I said 38. I stand corrected. Never heard a count. I didn't either. I never... You must. Yep. You're kidding. Okay, we never got. Okay. Was he still on lead lap? Yeah, but he put tires on. Mm -hmm. Waltrip in the lead lap. Thank you. Okay. Three hundred eighty-four laps complete, so we're down to the final moments. The dregs of it, but they're pretty interesting ones tonight. There has been a caution. There was an incident in the main straightaway. You're riding with Bobby Hillen. He's coming down a main straightaway. And there you see 
the car of Dick Trickle getting loose, the pedigree dog food car. Here's Hillen after that 38 spun coming off four, and they just barely touched right there. And now they're back out again. They're giving one to go, Ken. Only two cars pitted on that caution, Labonte and Darrell Walter. The guys on the lead lap, they were just two of them pitted. So now there are 15 laps to go. Car of Hillen, the 90 car, which was the onboard camera car, and Trickle were in contact for a moment down here. Yellow was thrown. It's been out for three, four laps now. And at lap 386, they'll turn them loose. Ken, something that could be a problem right here. You see these cars on the inside, the guys that were lapped down, they put fresh tires on. They didn't have anything to lose. Now they're going to be quicker than the leaders. Remember so the they're, going, they're going to be a possibly in the way, not in the way, but they're going to be quick as the leaders are quicker. Atlanta and San Diego tied in the bottom of the second. Don't forget, you're going to see the last game of that series tomorrow, 4 o'clock Eastern, here on TBS. We're underway. Final moments. Oh! Car getting spun in front of the field. Big crash. That coming out of turn number two. One, two, three cars collected. Hillen is all smashed up at the front end. The Heilig Myers car, they're coming back to caution. Well, it was what Neil called. Those cars on the inside had the bike, they had the rubber. As you ride here with car number 90 and take a look at what happened to the Junie Donlevy car. Don Levy, a legend in this part of the country, been building cars for almost half a century, 43 years. And this one, you can ride off. Yeah, Gant was sitting in the racetrack, and I think Hillen come along and, and got into Gant. Here where we're in, inside with Bobby Hillen. Yeah, he's okay in the car. He's moving around. And he's got it fired. Here's Gant's number 33. He got sideways. Remember, he was one of those cars that made that tire change. I think he may have got clipped going in, got it turned sideways. He was in the center of the track and was center punch. Here it is again. Here they go down in the corner. We see Gant on the inside. Wham, there's Earnhardt. They get in the rear and gets up into Elliott. And now here comes Gant down off of the racetrack. Schrader Let's see lucky. where Hillen comes from. The Gant backs up in the track. Oh, Hillen, nowhere to go. Clips him right on the rear back there. So much damage to run of Hillen's car. Working to get Harry Gant back in this thing in car number 33. Hillen's night is over. The hook is out for him. So now we're at lap 388. I'm sure we're going to get back to green before this one's over. You watch Kyle Petty coming out. How about a 10 lap heat race on Saturday night? We're How about maybe a five? In car, look at that wreck from Bobby Hillen's vantage point. Ooh, this is going to stink. Yeah, this is going down to the first turn right here. And then, okay, here it comes in. He just got in the back of the 41 car, Parsons. He, he was on the brakes trying to miss what was up in front. Okay, so he's going to go left. All of a sudden, guess when you come through the smoke? That's all the smoke. All of a sudden, you come out, wham. Bobby Hill in his car really took a shot. Yeah, that'll give you a headache right there, I promise you. Real time from the end car. Listen to this. Goodness, Bobby wasn't hurt of it. Looked like he might have a nice little headache this afternoon, tomorrow. No more damage than that, maybe. So there will be less than 10 laps to go when they get this race restarted. They still have safety crews cleaning up out there in turn number two. So let's bring you to where we are as they bring in this car number 90. We will have. 11 laps remaining. I think it'll be about nine when we get green. We have Rusty Wallace in the lead, trying to win it for two years in a row. It'll be Elliott in second. Earnhardt will be in third. Rudd is closing up on fourth. Then comes Mark Martin in fifth. Gordon in sixth as we get seven to restart. Labonte will be seventh. Darrell Waltrip in eighth. Brett Bodine in ninth. Don't go away. This is going to get interesting. Kyle Petty in tenth. <laughs> Ten cars in a sprint, a typical Saturday night shootout. Only instead of being the short track cars, it's the best in the business ready to go. As you ride down here, Jimmy Hensley taking you down in that cellular phone car. 
on the bottom of the racetrack. Here's Mark Martin getting ready from his vantage point back in fifth spot. The light is off on the pace car. We're ready to go racing. As they take green, there will be nine laps remaining. Wallace makes a beautiful start. Give him two car lengths going into turn number one. Second, Earnhardt's in third, sprinting down the back straightaway. Well, Rusty got a good jump, but look at Elliott reeling back in. Locked on the rear bumper. Number 11, Elliott Pontiac, first, Ford, second, Chevy, third. Standing room only crowd, standing all the way here in these last few laps. Ten cars in the lead lap. Can the ball stay there? Elliott was able to close that gap up. Catching a guy is one thing, but passing on this size racetrack when two cars are pretty evenly matched, it's going to be tough. Seven to go. There's Earnhardt closing in on his bumper, Bill Elliott. And if these two guys get going at it, Rusty's looking at that mirror and saying, have at it, guys. Y'all race all you want to race. There's Elliott slid out just a little bit, getting in that corner. Slipped a little bit. There's Earnhardt down to the inside. Elliott's car just arced up off that corner, pulled him away off the corner. Earnhardt to the bottom, and he's there. And as they struggle back, oh, sideways out of two comes Bill Elliott. Picks it up at over 100 miles an hour. Flails it down into turn number three, stays on the outside. Boy, this is just what Rusty wants. Five to go. Side by side, Elliott's car gets a good run up off the corner here every time. They're not giving much ground. Got a crash up in turn number four, too. This could be the race back for second place. We can't get it restarted. As they come to the line, it will be. Caution coming out with Wallace across the stripe. Elliott next. Followed by Dale Earnhardt. I tell you what, the pace car better be fast. He's about to get run over. Trickles car down on the bottom. It backed into the wall, and that one got snubbed up considerably. I'll tell you what, he's got it moving, and you can bet if he gets it off the racetrack, NASCAR will go green in a hurry here to finish this thing on the green. They're calling the safety equipment back in, parking back in position, so as soon as this 39 car gets around, they'll go green. There's one to go this time, so they want this thing to end on the green. Pace car brings him down by. The Pontiac pace car has that field in tow. It's Wallace, followed by Elliott and Earnhardt and Rudd. One, two, three, four. It's going to make it be three to go when they come around. No, that's right. There'll be two that come by. Two to go. It's eight. That's 397 right. right now. A two-lap shootout for a $700,000 prize. Yep, I would say... You just kind of do what you got to do in this next couple of laps. And what would you do, sir? I don't know. You know, we're seeing Rusty so good on the restarts. His car accelerates no, good no. on restarts. Say you were back there in second or third, and your old pal Wallace is up in front. Well, you just got to go. You know, you got to try to as far as you can. With two laps to go. You're going somebody to make a mistake when you did get away with just about. All right, two to go. Pace car is in. This is it to decide it all. Don't forget, October the 10th, Sunday, from Charlotte, North Carolina. 500 miles of the most competitive automobile racing in the world here on TBS. Wallace is away. Elliott's right there. Earnhardt goes up to the outside. Nice move by Elliott. Earnhardt thought he had a move up there. Bingity bang in the back straightaway. Schrader down the bottom side, making up some ground. Back comes Earnhardt into the back end of Elliott. White flag is out, one to go. Rusty Wallace is there. Martin is back in fifth spot. The string will end at four. Down the back straightaway. It's Rusty Wallace in front. Elliott making one final stab. It is not enough. Rusty Wallace has done it. He's just won his 27th Winston Cup victory. And he did it really the hard way tonight. Had to make up a lap and come back. And he come back he did. Rusty Wallace has done it. The Miller car.
The black and gold for Roger Penske's team for the second straight year has won their race. And a standing ovation from 70,000 for Missouri's Woo! Rusty Wallace. Well, I tell you, Mark Martin and the guys who can't do anything but pat them on the back for the run they've had every now and then in and what a run they had. A lap of honor for Alan Kowicki, for Davey Allison, who won here and we were back with you in March on this track. Rusty Wallace. Second spot to Elliott, third to Earnhardt, fourth to Rudd, fifth to Martin, sixth to Bodine, seventh to Darrell Walton. It's Rusty Wallace's moment. He'll be pulling into victory lane. We'll have a chat with him in just a moment. After this outstanding run, Rusty Wallace victorious here tonight at Richmond for the second straight year. He's pulled it off in style. 89, 92, and 93, the record book will show that Rusty Wallace of St. Louis, Missouri was the champion at Richmond International Raceway. Ken, Ken while going the last lap, there's Earnhardt going over the truck on that last lap after the caution, I mean, after the checkered flag. Well, Ken Schrader, let's take a look and see what happened. They're coming off the fourth turn here to start finish line. And Earnhardt and Schrader get together coming down through here. And this is not the end of it. They go down in the first turn. Ooh, there they go. That's when we had the other action back up on the front, front straightaway. But they really got together coming down through there. They're pretty good friends. I don't know what happened on that. Banging on each other a little at the end. Yeah. A lot of pressure as we come down to the end of this one. Well, now Rusty Wallace is pulling up into the victory lane area. As we mentioned, now there are seven races left this year. The pressure is on. Wallace picks up a very few points before this is over perhaps 10 to decided tonight. Not that much. We'll try to get a uh, rundown on those points for you in just a moment as Rusty Wallace pulls in. Crew Chief Buddy Parrott done an outstanding job with this car. And it's another good night. There's the sixth win of the season. He had five coming into the night. Number six is in. You mean we have to list the Hayes and picked it before the race? Isn't that awesome? But good for Rusty Wallace. Yes, Bad sir. For us. Let me tell you, Rusty Wallace ran his guts out tonight to get to the Randy, how about talking with the champion? Wow, champ, that was something else right there. You're lucky you're up front. It got wild behind you. Great night for you, though. Yeah, thank you very much. It was a good run for the whole crew. And uh, hey, the only thing I hate is that I didn't have a 28 flag in the car with me. But uh, uh, you know, the thought goes out with both of them. I'll tell you that. But uh, I'd like to thank uh, my sponsors, Miller Janio Draft, Goodyear Tires, Mobile AC, Pontiac. Everything went good today. Pit crew was really good. Got down a lap early because of a misunderstanding, and they got it back, and everything turned out well. So let bygones be guy bygones on that one. I mean, did you did you jump the start or, or brake check or anything? No, not at all. It's just a misunderstanding on their part. It just they thought I hit the brakes and brake check them, and I did not do that. But I can understand unless people can make a mistake. Evidently, no. it's been a year of streaks, Rusty. Uh, you early uh, catching a bunch, and then you break marks. So he had a chance to, to to set a record here tonight. Didn't do it. Yeah, and Mark's Mark ran awful strong. You know, hey, you got to miss a little bit every now and then. And I mean, for that guy to hit it four in a row, man, that was great. But uh, it feels good to match my 89 record with six wins right now, two poles. We led a lot of laps today. This was a brand new car and it ran real good. So we got a lot of good cars in the shop. Where was Roger tonight? Roger's here along with Rick Mears and they're all up there. This was Rick's first uh, stock car race. I'm glad I was able to win for him. Real dramatic night for Penske Racing. Congratulations, Rusty. Nice win. Uh, Dick Bergman with Bill Elliott. And after such a tough season, how does second feel? Very good. I mean, at least to could see the front and be able to kind of race for it and stuff. I hated to see the last two cautions come out because I was trying to bide my time and save my tires and I was watching Rusty and seeing where he was bad and good. But then when the cautions come out, Earnhardt would get a good run at us and I had to raise him a lap or two because you know my car wouldn't come around right off the bat and it was just a tough situation there then. 22nd to a uh, 26th to second is Bill Elliott back. I hope so. I hope I never left. <laughs> How rough were those last few laps? It was pretty tough because, you know, Earnhardt was fighting for his place and I was trying to fight for my place. And then Russ, he was just trying to drive his line around the racetrack and not mess up. But, you know, we gave it a good strong run and, uh, you know, this gives definitely some good momentum for the rest of the year. It was exactly what this team needed. Absolutely. Rusty Wallace 
led the most laps, give him those bonus points. He had 203 out here tonight. More of the story here at Richmond in a moment. Yes, sir. Coats or without coats? Oh, it's been a long race. What about without? I'll get to put my chair back now, little marks. Got points. Now the evening's action on the racetrack completed here at Richmond International Raceway. Big victory tonight for Rusty Wallace, who came back from a penalty earlier. Let's check some baseball scores for you. Tomorrow, of course, here on TBS, you'll be seeing the Braves and the Padres at 4 o'clock. Tonight, St. Louis, the Cardinals beat the Giants 3-1. to one, So that puts the Braves another half length out in front. The Braves in action tonight in San Diego. Three innings complete. No score in that one. We'll keep you posted on the scores tonight before we leave the air from Richmond this evening. Good to have you with us, of course, tonight here on TBS. And again, tomorrow's matchup, the Braves and the Padres, 4 o'clock Eastern time right here on TBS. You'll be able to follow the Braves' pennant chase once again tomorrow. Let's take a look at the True Value Hard Charger standings tonight. Of course, True Value pays $5,000 per race, $50,000 for the season standings. Mark Martin wins the True Value Hard Charger prize tonight with 1,065 points. Rusty Wallace, who led most of the, the latter portion of the race, won, uh, gets second in the hard charger standings. Darrell Waltrip, Bill Elliott, Kyle Petty rounding out those standings tonight. The great battle, lots of uh, interesting activity on the racetrack. Rusty Wallace, your winner here tonight at Richmond. Let's talk about uh, points for just a moment here tonight. Earnhardt is still very much in front as we get down to the last seven races, Neil, with 3,544, but Rusty Wallace took a little bit of a bite out of him tonight, whereas it was 304 points between first and second. Now it's only 284, 3,260 for Wallace, followed by Martin third, Jarrett fourth, and uh, Shepard fifth. So. Uh, Wallace is make, going to make it interesting as we get down on October 10th to Charlotte and the last events of the year closing out in Atlanta. I guess these guys keep wondering what they're going to do next to catch Earnhardt. They keep winning races and he keeps staying right there behind him. It's hard to get a gain on him. Well, you know, something that uh, Rusty Wallace said years ago, he said he always wanted to come off the fourth turn on that final lap with the wheels on fire. And that was really the case tonight. They were on A, because of the brakes, and B, with two laps to go, getting up two gears to come down and finish this thing up. Yeah, no, you talk about somebody with wheels on fire. We got R Ricky Rudd down there, Pitts Dick Berkins with him. Let's go see what happened there. Well, that was a wild end. What happened there coming out of the pits, Ricky? Yeah, a lot of things happened at once. I guess Dale wasn't looking where he's going and pulled right out of the pits and drove right inside him and knocked the front knocked that rear uh, wheel alignment out for us so that was kind of our night right there but i don't think it was intentional harry gant and i did the same thing the week before and it's 
pit crew members dropped the jack, that's our signal to go, and Dale just drove right out in pit road and run into me. But, you know, I would, uh, I wish that we had a chance to race him at the end. The guys were making adjustments to that tied Chevrolet all night long, and as the race went on, it got a little bit better, and we just uh, hate that we didn't get a chance to get up there and try to race him at the end like we should have. Schrader got in the way there at the end, I think I'd have got by Dale. What did you have to adjust into the car to make it fast at the end? Well, I think they just kept playing with air pressure, air pressure, air pressure, and I, they went every different way they could, and finally, the last couple of sets, it got better got better and finally we were looking real good and then uh, got wrecked on pit road ricky rudd where do we go from here next year you're going to be able to do this kind of running with your own team oh man i love this you know this is what racing's all about i love saturday night racing uh, uh you know i think for a while there, everybody's tempers are hot but you know get a chance to get a cool drink of gatorade and everything cools down we're ready to go again okay randy pemberton well mark martin sitting here interviewing with some local media as far as mrn radio mark uh a good run. Uh, there was a time when sixth place would, would bring a real big smile to your mouth or to your face, but that uh, wasn't a bad run tonight, but it broke your streak. It'll be all right tomorrow. You know, uh, it was a frustrating night because we we checked out on them at one time and uh, got so far ahead that we quit running hard because we were feeling kind of bad because we were beating them that much. And then, uh, you know, and then, then later on, it was like we couldn't keep up. You know, we did everything we could and tried to adjust the car, and, and it just it, it slipped away from us. What is it? The track, it gets rubber, it gets oil, it, it, it changes a little bit, I suppose, but what, what changed it for you? I don't know. I, I, I can't explain it. I, I, you know, there's some, uh, you know, we didn't anticipate it. It just happened, and uh, so we dropped back and, and uh, did our best. And we got caught on that last deal right in the middle where it was hard to decide whether it would be better to come for tires or not come for tires. If you're further back on the lead lap, you got nothing to lose. We were kind of caught there. And, just sort of stayed and that was probably a mistake cost us a couple spots did you get worried that those guys uh took on tires some of the guys that were lapped down and they lined up on the inside of you i don't think that ought to i don't I, that was awful i mean it was really hard we almost tore some cars up there when harry spun and all it was really hard to race and there was a lot of pushing and shoving and rex looking for a place to happen but uh we got through it okay well he brought a clean race car home and he'll go to dover next week and be tough there $49,000 richer tonight is uh, Rusty Wallace after his success at Richmond International Raceway in the Miller Genuine Dram 400. And we'll be back to interview a couple of the other key players in tonight's race after we pause for these messages. Catch play. Everybody laughs at me. <laughs> you got to save.
as we take an aerial look at Richmond International Raceway tonight. The fans leaving here, they saw a great battle tonight that went to Rusty Wallace. We're here in the STP Pit Center tonight with Brett Bodine, the driver of the Quaker State Board. You got a nice fifth spot tonight. Yeah, not too bad. You know, we, we really couldn't hit on anything that would get us up there towards the front and mix it up with the leaders. We hung around there at 6th, 7th, 8th all night long. We finally got some fresh tires on in the end there and uh, made some good moves in that heavy traffic that Mark Martin was speaking of. And, Got by Mark on the last lap. This is a typical short track battle on a Saturday night. Oh, this is great. This is like running back home, you know, the little <laughs> quarter mile bull rings, and uh, we brought it all here to Richmond International. Now, you've had a couple of good runs in recent weeks. What's been changing for your team here? I think the momentum, it really is coming from uh, the car's mechanical problems are behind us. Uh, we're more competitive. We've got our chassis set up a little better, but the pit crew is just doing a tremendous job. Those guys have been working real hard. We're in those sub. 18 second pit yeah. stops and that's what it's going to take to run up front with these guys all right we wish you luck the rest of the year brett bodine fifth you. place tonight gentlemen yeah beat mark martin just at the finish let's take a look at the final results these are unofficial tonight as to how they came across elliot with a terrific finish in second spot you know neil for the 10th race in a row uh rusty wallace and mark martin finish on the lead lap those guys got their act together. Let me tell you what if you're going to step in the top of this points battle you better finish in the top 10 because you're not going to gain or stay up in that front Taking a look at these standings all the way through, and you see that uh, Phil Parsons got himself a 20th. And we had 10 cars still in the lead lap when the thing ended tonight. Certainly wasn't any kind of a speed record, as uh, we totaled out, what, eight caution periods before it was over? Uh, 47 laps of the 300 were run under yellow uh, with all the incidents that we had, and six cars did not finish. Let's go to uh, Dick Burke. Uh, Bob Levani, after such a good, strong run, why no smile? <laughs> Well, I don't know. You know, it's just one of them deals that I uh, lost the lap there and then uh, lined up in the wrong line, passed some cars, shouldn't have passed, and uh, got penalized and lost another lap. And, you know, had a pretty decent car for 50 laps, and then it just kind of fizzled out. Okay, Bobby Labonte, good run tonight. Okay, uh, Rusty Wallace has said I like to be re seen as a guy who's aggressive and outgoing and reliable and friendly. I like to make people happy. He certainly made his sponsors happy once again this year, Neil. I'll tell you what, he must project that image because that's where they see him competitive and happy at what he's doing. Great win for him. And, you know, you look at Mark Martin, what a streak they had. It had to end sometime, but, uh, boy, they ought to be proud of what they accomplished. Now, let's see what they'll do at Richmond October 10th. Uh, let's go down and talk to the guys along pit road tonight. Randy? Well, I think the thing that amazes me, well, Rusty Wallace celebrates in victory lane behind me. Mark Martin has had a great run here. Rusty Wallace comes in and runs good here tonight. Dale Earnhardt, that car just was not working. That's a championship caliber team. They put rubbers in the left front, the right rear. They worked on it. Even when he has a bad night, he can finish third. I mean, that, that whole team and Dale Earnhardt, that, that's what amazes me. Dick Berger? I'm going to tell you what, if your heart wasn't pounding at the end of that race, you just don't understand racing. <laughs> that was as good a finish, as wild a finish, as we've seen here at Richmond in a long while. Johnny Hayes? One of the best races all year, but it also proves I'm one of the most intelligent people in motorsports because I said Rusty Wallace in your face, and y'all thought I wasn't smart. Way to go, Rusty. Uh, uh, Rick Benjamin. <laughs> Certainly a uh, great call by Brother Hayes earlier on. Uh, we, we thought Rusty would be a, a very competitive force tonight. I'm really glad to see Bill Elliott and his team put on a strong run tonight. They've struggled all season long, as we've documented. This may turn it around for the Budweiser Ford folks, and uh, we will see how they do the rest of the year, especially in Charlotte when we get there in October. October 9th and 10th will be there. Saturday, the Grand National Race, and then we'll be back on Sunday for the 500 at Charlotte. It's always a great event there. For Neil Bonnet and uh, Randy Pemberton and uh, Rick Benjamin, Dick Bergeron, and our seer, Johnny Hayes, thanks for being with us here at Richmond International Raceway tonight. And we look forward to having you with us in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm Ken Squire here at Richmond, where tonight it was Rusty Wallace.